It was a normal day for the people and pilots who sat in that airplane, but the whole story was spoiled by the terrorists who hijacked the plane. Our protagonist, unexpectedly for himself and probably for everyone around him, decided to show unprecedented courage. Thanks to him, he managed to buy a little time for the flight attendants and instill courage in the other passengers. All four terrorists were captured alive, and none of the hostages were hurt, except for our protagonist. He was slowly dying from bullet hits, and only thought why such a he, a typical homebody, chubby, at that moment could not sit quietly in place, and also joked that he had reviewed Van Peace, and decided that he consisted not of fat, but of rubber. At that moment, he was very scared, and also very sorry for his act. His best moments of his life began to run before his eyes. He was 22 years old, and he still didn't have a girlfriend, and he really didn't want to die, but a lot of blood drained from him, and he closed his eyes. Afterward, he woke up to shouts of, WAKE UP! Our protagonist found himself in bed, and he was awakened by his friend Noodles, and he was also in a stupor and asked if he was still alive. Noodles looked at him strangely, and of course replied that he was alive, but also threatened that if he didn't go to the vapors again, he might apologize. He got off the bed and realized he was in the dorm. He also started gnawing on the bed, thus testing his tastes, and also turned on the computer. Also, the main character started to go through the trash can, but he was stopped by Noodles screaming, and he asked to punch Noodles, punch him in the face. Noodles, realizing that for his friend he is not sorry for anything, and also since such an action, he decided to hit not once, but twice, as they say as a gift. He felt pain after the blow, and still believed that it was clearly not a dream and also his cheek became red from such a blow. Noodles only laughed at him. He hadn't seen him so freaky before. Afterward, he asked what date it was. Noodles was again surprised by his questions, but still answered that today was the 7th of August. This made our protagonist stunned. He needed to think it over and digest it all, so he went to take a shower. There, he began to figure out what had finally happened to him. After all, that plane crash had happened on November 11th, and now it was August 7th. It turns out that he not only didn't die, but also moved back three months. He also assumed it was a reward for all his good deeds in life. Or the universe had decided he hadn't gotten everything done yet, or both. He also found it strange why he had only traveled back three months and not three years. After all, three months is so short. In other stories, people are reborn as babies and have tons of time to succeed. And he's only three months old. And in his opinion, he won't be able to change anything in that time. During these three months, there have not even been any events that could radically change his fate. Only now he realized that he was very, very lucky. And he was even a little angry that he hadn't bought lottery tickets. But on the other hand, he'd gotten a lot of nerve, and he should be glad he was alive. If the universe gave him one chance, he should use it wisely. He immediately started setting goals. To find a girl, to go to another country, to go to a concert of his favorite band, to attend an anime festival. He made a vow that he would try and try and try to achieve everything. After his shower, he went to the Academy of Art. Noodle reminded him once again that he'd better not be late for that witch's pairing, for he was conducting roll call. As they were walking to the Academy, Yang Gao and his girlfriend Xiao Mei came out to meet them. Noodles only patted Batten on the back, for now he was the only one left without a girlfriend. Yang Gao and his girlfriend Xiao Mei told him not to be discouraged, because initiative and perseverance are what counts. Batten did not answer them, and just left them, because the time of study was already pressing. Noodles saw his friend getting upset and started to cheer him up. If even a freak like Yang Gao had a girlfriend, then he should have one. In the Art Academy, the ratio of guys to girls is 1.4. Every guy is worth his weight in gold, and if you throw a net, someone will get caught. But, on the other hand, he was already in his third year, and he still didn't have a girlfriend. At that time, a beautiful girl, with whom Batten was in love, passed near them, so he decided to take him for a ride and bet him that he'd piss off even going near her. It was Tang Wei, and Batten decided to approach her. And then Noodles whispered in his ear that if he wanted to prove that he had balls, there was no better opportunity. I mean, he's had his eye on her for a long time, and there was some truth in his words, for he had been in love with her for a long time. All this time he'd been afraid to approach her. But if the universe had given him a chance, he had no right to be afraid. Meng Fan clenched his fists and walked even closer to her, and asked how she was doing. After he asked, he involuntarily started singing, Sweet Tanya Wei, I've been secretly in love with you for a long time. I want to... And after he realized that he had started singing involuntarily, he felt like a fool. 
Tang Wei laughed from him and asked if he had eaten another pill today. Meng Fan became very embarrassed and blushed all over. Batan started to justify that he hadn't eaten any pills at all. It was just that he liked her, so he suggested dating her. Tang Wei asked him to stop, and not to joke like that again. Meng Fan shouted at her, Yes, I am not joking. Tang Wei reassured him, for to her, Batan was like a brother. She also had a bunch of things to do, so he ran off and promised to talk later. After this, Meng Fan was very upset. After that, a hologram appeared in front of him, which only he could see. And this mission was called, Good Guy. There was also a requirement for this mission. Get 100 rejections from girls. By completing the mission, he would get the good guy achievement and plus 10 to his hand speed. First stage of accomplishment. One rejection. Points plus one. Hand speed plus one. Second stage of accomplishment. 10 failures points plus 10. Hand speed plus two. Third stage of execution. 100 rejections, points plus 100, hand speed plus three. As Batten stood there reading, the bell rang for steam. Noodles grabbed his hand and they both ran to the pair. The teacher at this time began the roll call, and when she got to Meng Fan, she was very angry because no one answered. After that, Batten and Noodles entered the auditorium and started apologizing for being late. Noodles made up a story that Meng Fang had had diarrhea in the morning. The dean of the animation faculty, Qin Jiao, was very angry at these two, so she gave them minus 10 points on the exam each. Afterward, they went into the auditorium and Qin Jiao began to introduce the lecture. She began to tell them that it is not so important what exactly serves as a cultural conduit in the transmission of images. One should not assume that when studying fine arts, after all, they are only learning how to draw. At this, Batten was falling asleep and not listening to her at all. Noodles also did not listen to her, and drew her in the form of a demon. Because a witch is a witch five seconds late, and she got angry as if they came at the end of the pair. Noodles decided to ask what Batten thought of the situation, but he didn't say a word in response. Noodles first thought that the situation with Tang Wei had shaken him up like this, and thus he had become a fool. At this time, Meng Fan was in his mind and was figuring out how his new trainer worked. He didn't understand what the system was, why and who gave him this feel like a loser a hundred times assignment, because he would burn with shame faster. And also, what kind of reward is this? because normal people for completing tasks give super weapons, or hand dragons, or at least a plus to charisma or strength. After all, the same improvement in hand speed, in his opinion, seems useless. If he gets rejected a hundred times, then he's a hopeless forever alone. When he came out of his consciousness, he decided to test his hand speed. Batten started shaking her hand so fast that even Noodles was surprised. Qin Jiao saw this and was completely puzzled as to how he dared to tear down her pair. And also, she knows that he hasn't been going to classes lately because he was preparing a report on categorizing clothes from different eras. Meng Fan was in a complete stupor, and sweat broke out from his forehead. After all, he realized that Noodles had put a lot of nonsense in her ears. He stood up and started to explain himself, but stopped. He couldn't tell her he was busy watching anime. Qin Zhao said to immediately continue speaking instead of mumbling, and Batten said that everything was correct, and he was preparing a report. Qin Zhao asked him to give it to the entire audience in the next class, and gave him three days. After class, he went to the library to prepare this report. It took him three hours just to compose the content. On the other hand, he was now very familiar with the topic. But it would be unrealistic to draw in those three days. But it was better to draw as much as he could than nothing. When he started drawing, I really wondered why he was drawing so fast. After a couple of seconds, he drew a nice drawing with no problem. Afterward, he remembered that he had a plus one to his hand speed. He was very happy and satisfied. It turns out that hand speed is useful, and now he will do everything faster with his hands. He started apologizing for doubting the coach, and he was totally wasted on him. After all, with the speed of his hands, having time to prepare a report no longer sounds like an impossible task. Afterwards, he stopped and didn't realize why he was wasting time drawing at all now. He needs to get more rejection and get another plus to his hand speed. And the library is just full of girls, which was very good for him. Only problem was, he didn't know what to say to them. It wasn't appropriate to just ask a girl he didn't know to go out with him. But if you don't finish that witch's report, she certainly won't be thinking about decency. So he pounded on the table and decided to act decisively. The next day, he dressed up and went to the library again. The most important thing is not to piss. You don't even have to do anything. Just open your mouth. Say a phrase that will give you a very nice bonus. 
When he entered the reading room, he saw a beautiful girl and was about to approach, but his feelings took control of him again. So he came up with a cunning plan. Taking a piece of paper, he drew her face on it and wrote, Hi, do you want to go out to dinner sometime? Afterward, he walked by her desk and put this piece of paper on her desk. A couple seconds later, the same leaf flew into his face. When he opened it, he saw a new writing on the sheet. If I were you, I'd give up dinners altogether. Afterward, he wondered if it even counted as a waiver. And when he went into the trainer, it didn't count. Probably, his approach was not quite unambiguous and the system is not able to recognize it. So he decided to be more straightforward and wrote on the same sheet of paper, I like you, let's go out. So he went over to her desk again and put that piece of paper on her desk again. A few seconds later, he saw her walking with that leaf in his direction. And he literally prayed that she would refuse him. But she passed him by and left the library altogether. And then Baton began to get angry. So she couldn't even come up and refuse. He pulled himself together and decided to change his strategy. He saw another girl reading a book and decided to approach her. He took her by the shoulder and said she was very beautiful. She turned around and looked at him strangely and asked if they even knew each other. But that didn't matter to Batten and once again asked if she wanted to date him. She blushed a little and sent him away, for she already had a boyfriend. And after that, Batten was credited with that rejection, and his score became 2 out of 10. He started to change, which bothered her, to which she started to wave it off and say it was fine. The scheme, of course, working, but it is better to act delicately, as girls should not be frightened. He saw another target and approached it. He compared her beauty to the Sakura of Spring. And in her presence the flowers begin to complex and also added that he would like to meet her this girl also turned him down saying that she already had a boyfriend he apologized for the inconvenience and left in doing so he earned a plus one rejection he got into the flavor of the case and began to approach already more confidently he was even turned down by lesbians after time and hard work he managed to get nine girls to turn him down and it turns out he only had one rejection left he was heading towards another crumb he bumped into someone. Aeon bumped into a man who just wanted to meet him because he's his phantasm. Apparently, he had seen him approach nine girls and had personally seen him rejected. He also noticed that he approaches everyone and has no criteria at all. But what impresses him the most is his unflappable attitude, as he almost cheered every time. Meng Fan was embarrassed by this, as he had not expected such a bright fan at all. He was very much alarmed by this attention to his person, and he had never seen him before. So he asked who he was. This fan introduced himself as a social commentator and moderator of a BBS group, and his name is actually Xiaoyu. He also asked if he could be interviewed. After he heard his name, and remembered who it was, and also knew they had 300,000 subscribers. This wasn't in Meng Fan's plans, so he shouted to him, Look, there's a UFO behind you. When Xiaoyu turned around, Meng Fan was no longer even around. It was as if he had vanished. He's been divorced like a child. And Batten was laughing at him, because what kind of a fool would give him an interview? So he really looked up. When he was running from this journalist, he was approached by the girl herself. She asked him for directions to workshop too. The woman thanked him and walked away in the opposite direction from him. Mong Fan only then realized that this was a chance to finish the first stage of his task and shouted at her back, Stop! I wanted to ask for directions too. This girl heard and turned around and asked where he wanted to ask for directions. Meng Fan walked up to him and said, Baby, can you tell me how to get to your heart? This girl was a bit confused, and it turned out that she also had a boyfriend who was just waiting in the workshop. She didn't want to offend or hurt him in any way, because he seemed like a nice guy, but it was a coincidence that she was already busy, so she wished to find her love. Meng Fang didn't care, because he's all about his assignments, and he did make it to the second round and he immediately wanted to go to the workshop and check out what plus two to hand speed meant. He walked into the studio and set three canvases in front of him, after which he began to create and make art. His hands are so fast, and yet he only made it to the second stage. He can't even imagine what will happen when he passes all the tasks and gets plus 16 to his hand speed. But in order to get to the third stage, he should consider a faster way to get rejections. But he also didn't understand how he could hit on 90 girls in such a short time. While he was painting, Noodles wrote to him. He asked him to wait in the workshop so that he could go to the canteen instead. At the moment he was scared that a girl had written to him. And then he wondered why he was scared, as if a girl could have written to him. And after that message from Noodles, he had a very good and wonderful idea. He doesn't have to hit on every girl in person. 
It's enough to make a mass mailing and get a lot of rejections. Of course, the probability of ignoring becomes higher, but it is still faster. After that, he started mass texting all the girls, hello, I love you, go to meet me. After a couple minutes, he wondered whether a rejection via messenger would definitely be taken into account by the system. So it was only necessary to send it to a couple of girls first and see what would happen. But on the other hand, there's nothing to be done and all you can do is wait. Most of the people he confessed his love to couldn't even bluntly reject him. They wrote to him, men fan, you missed sending it, did you? Ha ha ha, very funny, no, and it's not April 1st today, or you missed contact, and so on. And you had to admit, the idea didn't work, even though it seemed so brilliant and simple. On the other hand, he didn't want to be questioned, so he decided to go all the way and started texting everyone who responded to him with anything, this is not a jest, not a mistake, I didn't say anything, let's go out. And when he was sent straight to the forehead and denied love, his rejection meter kept going up and up, from which Meng Fan's mood also grew and grew. He's gotten a lot of hurtful and even truthful messages. For example, I don't have any feelings for you. What exactly do you like about me? Or, I think that a guy does not have to be handsome, the main thing is to like him. At the same time, I like handsome, not fat. Like, you know, I'm a Virgo, so I'm very pedantic. And you're not too hard on yourself, judging by your appearance. Even in this situation, he was still a human being. And no matter how they felt about him, it was best to apologize. Noodles ran up to him, grabbed him by the throat and began to interrogate him as to why he had confessed his girlfriend's love. He came up with the wrong addressee. But then the question arises for Noodles. Since he made a mistake, why didn't he cancel the sending of the message? Which in quite easily, could have been done. Batten replied that it was too late to realize this already and could not be undone. At this time, when Batten explained himself, Noodles texted her girlfriend on her phone. Although, maybe he got the wrong recipient. My friend got a confession from him too, he probably wants to date her. Noodles texted her. I hear you, my queen. Then I'll spare this pathetic animal. And after a couple seconds, his girlfriend wrote again. It seems to be a lot more complicated than that. Already over 10 girls have gotten the same confession. What's in his head? Noodles laughed heartily after that. Noodles approached him again and asked him why he had written to more than 10 girls about declarations of love. He couldn't tell about this system, not even to his friend Noodles. It was hard to explain to him otherwise though, because not so long ago he'd been afraid of girls like fire. Suddenly he had a great idea. He wondered if the rejection he got from the guy would count. After all, the system should take into account that he could have been gay or become gay in the process. It would be worth trying that with the guy too. If anything, he could say he was just messing around. Baton hugged him and explained that he had texted so many girls to make everyone think he liked girls. He started to snuggle up to him and whispered that he had only been pretending to be straight all this time. In fact, he adores guys and he loved only him and he started to reach up to kiss him. Noodles quickly jumped out of his hands, and he started yelling at him since he thought they were friends. He went to look in the system, and there he actually saw that this waiver had been credited. After he saw that the refusal had been credited, he approached him, saying that since he didn't want to kiss and greet him, we'd just stay friends. But Noodles wasn't going to be friends with a gay guy. Baton realized that he was not joking, so he started to act on the second plan, saying that it was a prank, and for such a performance, he should be given an Oscar. Noodles was furious. Noodles demanded an explanation of the situation from him. Baton told part of the truth. Namely, that Noodles had recently made fun of him because he didn't have a girlfriend. So he decided to send messages of love to everyone. He sent all the girls the same thing. After that, he decided to treat him to a nice meal. Considering how much food Baton had ordered, Noodles had almost given up resentment for today. At this time, Meng Fan wasn't even listening to him. He kept thinking about his pumping. Since rejections from the guys counted too, then he would make it to a hundred at their expense. Noodles saw that Meng Fan wasn't chowing down on anything, so he asked him that directly. He didn't answer anything, and Noodles snatched his phone out of his hands. Meng Fan was furious. After all, he had paid for his food, and he was still resentful and brooding. When Noodles picked up his phone and read that he was texting guys and proposing dating, he was stupidly stumped. He yelled out to the entire restaurant, Are you offering guys intimacy? And everyone in the restaurant turned their heads in his direction. Meng Fan asked to be quieter, but Noodles stupidly didn't realize if he was gay or just retarded. Meng Fan came up with an excuse again, this time more realistic. 
namely, that he had lost a bet, and now he needed to get a hundred rejections. Noodles could hardly believe it. Nevertheless, it seemed to be true, and he was close to his goal. Noodles handed over his phone and also reminded him to go see that witch tomorrow and asked if he had a report ready. After a few seconds in his system, he still managed to get a hundred rejections. In doing so, he got the good guy achievement and gained plus 10 to hand speed. And in total, he got plus 16 to hand speed. Since for the third stage he got plus 3 to hand speed, for the second stage, plus 2 to hand speed, and for the first stage, he got plus 1 to hand speed. And now for him to prepare a report, it's like two fingers on the pavement. After several hours, he came into the studio, arranged the canvases, and placed a huge stack of papers beside him. He remembered all the Chinese dynasties and afterward began to create. He also took two pencils in his hand, so he would be even faster. In a matter of seconds, he managed to draw a bunch of beautiful drawings. Just a few minutes later, he finished his report, and there were a bunch of pieces of paper lying beside him. The Chinese part of the report was dealt with quickly, but he hadn't even started on the foreign outfits yet. So, it is desirable to cover Europe, Ancient Egypt, India, Japan. It was already 10 o'clock in the evening on the clock, and at 8 o'clock, the couple already starts. After a few hours of work, he slept a little and came to the classroom for a couple. Noodles secretly approached him near the classroom. He shouted, Baton! at the top of his voice, which made Meng Fan very frightened and screamed in fright. In fact, Noodles wanted to ask where he had gone last night. After all, he didn't believe that he was able to make a report, so he went to hang himself out of desperation. Baton stepped closer to him and said, You'll see for yourself soon enough. And then abruptly, it was the teacher who shouted to the entire audience, Place! When everyone was already finally seated, the teacher asked Meng Fan to come over to her. Meng Fan, of course, thought that he had been summoned to tell about the report. Even Noodles started to keep it after all. He wasn't the first to go crazy making a report for this witch. But in reality, these mere mortals don't even realize that they are about to witness a true miracle very soon. Meng Fan walked over to her and was about to pull out his report. But he was stopped by the teacher. And then she handed him her phone, while asking him to read the messages in front of everyone. When he picked up her cell phone, he saw his message of love consciousness. And apparently by mistake, he had sent it to her yesterday, too. His teacher always thought he was a decent kid, but since he lets teachers be treated like that, we'll have to teach him a lesson. Seeing that she couldn't tell him what he had written, she decided to take matters into her own hands. She told all her students sitting in that classroom that Meng Fan had decided to divert my attention with this declaration of love just to make her forget about the report. More than half the audience was shocked. After all, they too had received a declaration of love from Batten yesterday. Especially Noodles was in complete shock, for he did not believe that Batten could confess love to this witch, though he had seen his pranks yesterday. All the students immediately started discussing him and making fun of him for even sending confessions to guys. Meng Fan didn't know how to react and was in a stupor, but he still asked everyone to listen to him. The teacher didn't want to listen to him, and if he didn't do the report she asked him to say so, and he could leave all those tricks to his girlfriends to perform. Meng Fan took out his report from his backpack and threw it on her desk. Teacher Qin Zhao couldn't believe her eyes when he showed her the report. The whole audience starts discussing him again, and even feeling a little sorry for him. Because if he's lying, she'll bury him even deeper. At this, Teacher Qin Zhao took the leaflets closer, and still couldn't believe it, as the drawings made at a very high level. Oh, and plus, there are at least 500 leaflets here. In three days, even Celestials wouldn't draw them. She immediately thought that he was deceiving her, and he obviously had help from someone, so he was asked to defend this report in front of the whole audience. And it was not a question for him at all, as he did everything by himself. He first decided to talk about Chinese outfits, Namely, he would start with the Tang Dynasty. The distinctive feature of Tang Dynasty women's outfits was that the skirt, dress, and girdle were one piece. The length of the sleeves was about three-fourths of the length of the arms. Next, he moved on to foreign attire. In medieval Europe, monotone clothing prevailed, with women wearing long dresses of black, white, or gray. That said, everyone was shocked that Batten was able to make this report. Teacher Qin Zhao and Noodles were especially surprised for they couldn't recognize Meng Fan. Teacher Qin Zhao also wondered why he had confessed his love back then, if it wasn't for the sake of distraction. Putting two plus two together, it didn't make sense to her. It seems she had underestimated the power of the hormonal surge in young boys his age. 
When Meng Fan finished, everyone sitting in that audience applauded. No one recognized the old baton. They were all reluctant to acknowledge his success, but their hands reached out to clap for him. The teacher praised him and told him to go back to his seat, but he didn't think so. And since he was standing here in front of everyone, he wanted to explain about the messages. The teacher got a little worried. She thought he was going to ask for her hand like in a snotty melodrama. Meng Fan had actually told everyone that he had bet. And so everyone sitting in that audience, including the guys, received a message from him declaring his love. The teacher exhaled when he told the story. She also asked him to get more involved in such sports. Because from the looks of it, he was a very promising guy. And it would be better if he did useful things. Meng Fan bowed to the front and promised that it wouldn't happen again. Also, he would definitely make it up to her. When Batten sat down in his seat, Noodles immediately asked him how he managed to do all this, since he knows him and what he did today really shocked him. Meng Fan made up a story again, this time of black eyes, and it was partly true as he really did have circles under his eyes. Noodles didn't believe in all this nonsense, because he had circles under his eyes almost every day, and he thought he had just made a deal with the devil. Meng Fan told him to get behind him, as he already had a headache, he also needed to make it up to the guys. Noodles was surprised, because he didn't understand how the man wanted to apologize to everyone while sitting on his phone. He decided to send red envelopes to the common group. In them, messenger users put an arbitrary amount withdrawn from their balance. These envelopes can be personal. That is, users send an envelope to a friend, he opens it and receives the full amount, and his wallet, and can be auction. When the envelope is sent to a group chat with the total amount, and all the money gets the user who first opens the gift envelope, or the sender himself sets how many users, to distribute the total amount. After such generous gifts, a new task spender has been added to his system to complete the task to spend a million wen. After completing the task, the spender achievement would be awarded. With such a sum, Meng Fan shouted out, What a lot! Noodles jerked at his shouting since he couldn't see this task. It was a total mockery to him but still decided to watch the stages. In the first stage, you have to spend 10,000, reward plus 10 points. The second stage, spend 100,000, reward plus 100 points. Stage three, spend 500,000. Fourth stage, spend 1 million, reward plus 1,000 points. And only after all these stages will the achievement spender and plus one to luck. He was very unhappy with this system and just stupidly sent this system with these assignments. And then he started waving his hands in anger. Noodles stood there bewildered by the situation. And he immediately thought that he was possessed by demons. With rage, he was about to turn to Noodles, but he stopped him. And since Noodles had already gotten one of his envelopes, he invited him to eat at his expense. After that, he was more relaxed and decided to forget about the fucking system for now. After all, it was more important to go get something to eat. After a good snack, he returned to his dorm at 8 o'clock that evening and continued to think about this assignment. Namely, he was concerned if he couldn't complete this assignment, would the system give him the next assignment? If he doesn't, he'll have this assignment hanging over him for the rest of his life. A million in exchange for a plus one in luck, and whether it's even worth it. He was extremely pleased with his hand speed. But luck, he thought, would not be as useful to him. And if you get a million in an illegal way, his mom finds out, and she'll just kill him. But, on the other hand, if the system doesn't produce another assignment within a couple weeks, then he'll be back to tackling the problem again. Abruptly, Noodles walked into the room, shouting that he was now a celebrity. It turned out that for the last couple of days, he not only sent messages with declarations of love, but also did live in the library. And he also found out that Batten tried a new phrase every time he approached her, and when he refused, he didn't blush, didn't lose his temper, and went straight to the next girl. Meng Fan looked at him strangely. And then he picked up his phone and saw an article titled Secret Chubby Houseboy in Pursuit of Love. And also the author of the article was Xiao Yu. And that's when he remembered the same strange type journo Xiao Yu. When he looked closer, he didn't see his picture and name. Then he calmed down. He threw the phone to Noodles and said he had nothing to do with it because it didn't say anything about him either. And then Noodles said two plus two. And the fact that he sent under a hundred declarations of love recently is no coincidence at all. Meng Fan realized that if Noodles had figured it out, then the rest of his classmates would figure it out as well. Thus, because of the reporter, he was in a very uncomfortable situation. Noodles saw his worried face and decided to calm him down. He was a friend after all. 
Since he had already explained everything to everyone and made amends financially, there was no reason for him to worry. At 5 o'clock in the morning, he decided to open the comments, which didn't make him very happy. There were a lot of negative comments about him. Like, how could you let yourself get so messed up, it's just awful. Or, girls, if you go to the library, don't forget to wear masks, you might get swine flu uterus. Mostly all the negative comments were about being overweight, but there were also more or less positive comments like, turn on your brain, he's obviously just betting on someone. He couldn't seriously expect anyone to respond positively to his jokes. He couldn't sleep for a long time after that. It all came down to one thing, his excess weight. So he didn't want to give them any further reason to ridicule him. He got up early in the morning, brushed his teeth, then went to get dressed. And in a few minutes he was already at the entrance, all dressed up in sports clothes and in a fighting mood. Because he was going to lose weight, because Meng Fan was making a loud noise and dressing up in the room, Noodles woke up and asked where he was dressed up like that when it was still dark outside. Told that he had decided to run and lose weight, Noodles didn't believe it and went further to sleep, trying to digest this information and assuming it was still a dream. He had wanted to lose weight and start running for a long time, but it never came to actual action. Until the day he died, he thought he'd start tomorrow or Monday. But if life gave him another chance, he would take it to the fullest. After a few minutes of running, he was really tired and he thought he had a lung fracture or something. And he'd only run 100 meters. The experiment failed, he's too fat. Now for not even running is something out of bounds. Suddenly, as he was lying there, a very pretty girl came up to him and pulled his arm and asked him how he was feeling in general. Meng Fan was very embarrassed and blushed when she approached him. He decided to take the girl's help after all and thanked her for it. Meng Fan also asked what she was doing here. That girl replied that she was running around here every day and had not met him here before. When Meng Fan said that it was his first time, the girl praised him and wished him to continue practicing. Meng Fan was even more embarrassed and added in a quiet voice that he had only run a hundred meters. In this girl's opinion, that wasn't the most important thing. He made the first step. That's the most important thing. After talking, she ran on and wished him luck with his training. After such a girl, he picked himself up and continued to run onward while vowing that he would not quit. After running a couple of meters, the front popped up with a new mission. Score! He was very glad that now he didn't have to worry about completing the Trangira assignment. This time, the task didn't even have stages. It simply requires you to travel 10,000 kilometers. For completing the task, the achievement Speedwalker would be awarded, plus 10 to speed, plus 10 to strength, plus 10 to stamina. Meng Fan was furious as he didn't understand how such a thing could even be thought of. The length of China from west to east is only 4,500, and he has to travel that distance twice. Also, he had run a few hundred meters today and almost died, and here they were offering 10,000. So he came up with a plan to get back in shape as soon as possible, and start running 3 kilometers a day. It would take him about 10 years to accomplish this task. The goddamn system is fucking with him. After a little thought, he remembered the phrase, Try, don't give up, and everything will come. And that was the key to his solving the task. It was only after he tried running that this task was revealed to him. If he keeps trying and doesn't give up, who knows what else the system will surprise him with. Nothing in this world comes for nothing. If you don't strive for anything and don't make any effort, why should heaven help you? And when he opened this task again, there were already 15 stages. For the first stage, you have to walk 10 kilometers, reward, plus in one point, plus one to endurance. The second stage, you need to pass 30 kilometers, the reward plus 10 points, plus 1 to strength. And only on the third give plus 1 to speed, for 60 kilometers. If he cannot even complete the tasks, he will still receive rewards and pump after completing each stage. And the more his endurance, strength and speed skills are pumped up, the easier and faster it will be for him to perform the next stage. There was also an equip button near the stage which he decided to press. He was transported to a store that sold all sorts of things for sports and they were all sold for points. Meng Fang's balance was 111 points. It was only now that he realized what the points were for. He has just enough for a pair of sneakers. Right now they are the most needed and were on sale for just over 100 points. When he clicked on them, the features of these sneakers were revealed. They are made of nanomaterials. Durable, seamless, airtight, reduce vibration levels, waterproof, anti-ice, gravity guidance system, highly elastic, wear resistant, laces untie protection, counting distance, time, average speed, average pace, 
stride distance, calories, corrections for varus foot, valgus foot, even tension distribution, and also equipped with voice assistant, navigator, ultra accurate results. Such characteristics made Meng Fan's saliva flow, and he wanted these sneakers very badly. They also came with a plus one to speed. This was just what he needed. These sneakers are the best fit for him. Knee protection and a plus one for speed will solve half his problems. After Meng Fan clicked the buy sneakers button, then these very new sneakers appeared in his hands. And he wondered why they were so small. And he thought that it was another trick from the system, although they seemed perfect to him at the beginning. And then those sneakers vibrated and were already on Meng Fan's feet. They fit him really well. Even though they look almost the same as the last pair, they feel different. Even all the sweat was absorbed somewhere, it was like he was wearing pillows on his feet. And when he began to walk, a hologram appeared before his eye that showed the distance he traveled, the time he used, the length of his stride, and the calories. He wanted to test them in action, so he decided to run one kilometer first. When Meng Fan started to run, the controlling processes were set in motion, and the system also detected critical errors in the carrier's movements, and proceeded to apply forced corrections, to which, of course, Meng Fan agreed. After that, his legs felt a little stiff. It was not quite comfortable, but he could already feel a noticeable reduction in the strain on his knees. Even his speed increased slightly. After that, he ran 500 meters with ease, but after 800 kilometers, he was tired. Even though he now has these miracle sneakers, but his body is not yet ready for such loads, but still a better result than last time. But when he remembered the very girl who told him not to give up, he pulled himself together. If he folded his arm so easily and continued to stay in his comfort zone, then such angels would always be all within his reach. So since he has set a goal to run one kilometer, he will do it. And he actually did it. It took him 20 minutes and he also expended 500 calories, which is about the same as two chicken wings. After doing that though, he was absolutely all wet and sweaty. After completing his goal, it felt so good on his soul. And here I was at the Academy of Fine Arts at five o'clock, listening to this teacher. But luckily the bell rang and she let everyone go. Noodles also decided to tell about his very strange dream. Baton didn't understand anything at first. And then Noodles told him that he had dreamed that he got up for a jog early in the morning and it all sounded like a joke, which made him laugh. Mei Fan smiled and told him that it wasn't a dream at all and he had decided to take up sports and finally lose weight. At that time, the teacher approached them, which made them both very frightened. She invited Mei Fan to dinner at her expense. Noodles was in a complete stupor. He couldn't believe that this witch had called Batten over for dinner. Mei Fan was of course shocked as well, but he didn't refuse and agreed. A few hours later, late one night at 11 o'clock, he came into the dorm all sweaty. Noodles saw the one who said nothing, was completely exhausted and went straight to the shower. And from this he got a version of it, although it sounds too exotic, but apparently it is not so far from the truth. He thought that witch was out of her fucking mind, and that she had a perverted taste in guys. After Mei Fan came out of the shower, Noodles ducked at him and shouted, Tell the truth. Batten didn't even know what he was talking about. He only said three words, you and the witch. And Mei Fan immediately understood everything and where he was going. He immediately sent him away with such thoughts. Noodles' hand slipped on the wet floor, and he fell right on top of it while almost kissing his lips. At that moment, Li Dekiang, the roommate, walked into the room. And when he saw them on the floor, so also one naked, he realized that he walked in at an inconvenient moment interrupted them, so they decided to walk. He didn't even have time to leave the room before they both shouted, Come back! Noodles walked up to Datsung and wanted to explain that it wasn't really what he thought it was about. Da Kiang only hugged him, reminded him of Lu Xin's phrase, Love has no specific gender. If it has one, then it has the right to exist. He also told them not to be embarrassed and wished them to be themselves. He was even happy for them and would remain their friend anyway. Batten got into the conversation and ordered to listen to Noodles and not to interrupt him. Noodles began to tell the whole story in detail. In fact, the witch called Batten for dinner and he came back all sweaty and tired afterwards and went to take a shower. He thought that the witch was using him to fulfill her S&M tendencies and when Batten came out of the shower, he began to question him. He took his hand away, and since the floor was wet, Noodles slipped and by accident almost smacked Batten, and just at that moment, he walked in. Da Kiang was shocked when he heard that Batten and the teacher were together. He thought they were just gay, but it turned out to be very patched up. 
Even Lu Xin didn't write about this kind of thing. But Tan looked at the two of them and called them morons. And then he explained that she'd actually just asked him to eat. First, she wanted to make it up to him for being prejudiced and unjustifiably accusing him of being a slacker. Second, she really liked his report and decided to show him a book that needed illustrations. Those both looked at him and synchronously said, I don't believe it! He then took out a book from his backpack, Thousand Year Dream Xiao Ti, and showed it to them. They were shocked by what they saw. They loved this author Xiao Ti and were always waiting for a new novel from him. When Da Qiang picked up this book, he was overjoyed and his eyes glistened with such beauty. Xiao Ti is the modern goddess of short stories, and he adores her very much. Noodles also heard that she's already checked out a bunch of artists, she just doesn't like anyone. And he asked why he even wanted to get into this mess, because it's better to play games with him on his phone. Mei Fan had heard about it, and he thought it was a great opportunity to try to do something useful after school. You can't play games all the time. Noodles started questioning him again about the witch's water. He was still curious about his relationship with the witch. He had long ago noticed that on the one hand she treated him more strictly than the others, and on the other hand, she cared for him so much. Mei Fan started to tell a long story that her mom had her teacher, so he's known her since childhood and they don't have any special relationship. Those thought for a bit, and since his mom was a witch educator, it turns out she's not an easy woman herself either. Batten calmed them down by saying that they were always making up stories like that. He's just an ordinary, fat, stay-at-home guy. Noodles even felt a little uncomfortable because he was ranting at his friend. And he asked him not to talk about himself. If he lost a little weight, he could be in a stripper movie. Mei Fan also believed in it, so he decided to run every day in the morning and evening. Even today after dinner, he ran two kilometers. As expected, they didn't believe him at first. And in fact, Noodles wanted to just politely say a few comforting words to him. Mei Fan took out his phone and showed them that he had already run three and a half kilometers today. Noodles guessed that he had gotten so upset through his comments. And he asked him not to take it so personally because in this way he could drive himself to the ground and ruin his health. And they thought that he would quit running after a couple of days. And then he would hate himself more than before. So they wanted to protect him from all this. Batten promised he wouldn't tear up and he would lose weight very carefully. And plus it would be good for your health as well as your self-esteem. And after that, he went to bed with peace of mind. He also swore to himself to prove to everyone that he wasn't made of shit. He also dreamed that he was running and jumping over an obstacle with hurtful words written on it, like, Give up, fatty, you're not going to make it. And waiting for him at the finish line was an angel girl who believed in him and told him not to give up. But all that sleep was shattered by the alarm clock, set for 5 o'clock, for a run. And as usual, he went to brush his teeth, thinking only of her. He hadn't seen her at the stadium yesterday but he hoped to see her today. Again, the noise woke Noodles, who was again surprised that he was up so early to run. When Mei Fan arrived at the stadium, she wasn't there, which made him a little upset. On the other hand, it was probably for the best. After all, his form so far did not allow him to impress her, and the best thing would be to meet her when he's slim and in shape to make her jaw drop. And this time, he ran two kilometers in 20 minutes. When Mei Fan was entering the second lap, he finally saw that very girl. Ta immediately noticed how Batten had increased his speed and stamina, barely recognizing him at a glance. And she also swept up the fact that he holds his body flawlessly and puts on his nagi when running like a professional athlete. Mei Fan was very happy to hear her say such wonderful and warm words about him. But since he didn't want to talk about his system, he told her that he had just watched a lot of videos on the internet. She had also seen him yesterday. And he had looked tired then after running only 200 meters and today he was still running after two kilometers. He had never met such a progressive person before. But since he was already tired, and this girl was just starting her run, she wished him luck and ran on, for it was a couple of hoot not to relax. Mei Fan just wanted to ask her what her name was at that moment, and he would like to catch up with her and ask her. But she's carrying like the wind, and he's not in a state to catch up with her yet. After some thought, he realized that one lap was 500 meters, he would only have to wait for her here, and soon she would run by him again, and then he decided to talk to her. He stood up for a little breather, and that one had already whizzed by him with great speed. And of course he missed her again. But just standing around waiting for her is too humiliating. You have to keep moving at least. After running some more, he finally made his goal for the day, and he ran 3 kilometers in 33 minutes. And he knows all the exact figures thanks to his miracle sneakers. 
Even though he was completely out of energy and he'd accomplished his goal for the day, he still wanted to talk to her, no matter what it cost him. For now, he decided to just go, and maybe she'd be doing some post-workout stretching and that's where he'd catch her. Suddenly, a drone with a scroll flew by in the afternoon, which gave him a knowing fright. And this drone opened this scroll and it said, Hu Yin Song plus Wu Tong equals love. And it was all for the very girl Batten had fallen in love with. Then, a man came up to her with a bouquet and his bodyguard. Since today is the 521st day of their acquaintance, he decided to greet her in this way. And also in internet slang, the number 521 equals, I love you. And then Mei Fan realized that her name was Wu Tong, and it seems that she was already busy with this guy, from which he was very upset, because he began to work harder at sports, not mainly for her sake. She also gave him the motivation to run, because she was the first girl who believed in him besides his mother. And since he had nothing to do here, he decided to leave. But suddenly, out of nowhere, noodles appeared before him. And only then did he know the reason for his sudden change. Baton asked why he had come to see him so early. But he just wanted to see if he was really running around. As it turns out, he only comes here to stare at the hottie, Wu Tong. Mei Fan wondered how he knew her name and who she was. Noodles immediately gave him a very surprised look. She's known to almost everyone because she's one of the prettiest girls at their art academy from the traditional painting department. But Mei Fan didn't care about her anymore because he had seen such a tough guy and he clearly had nothing to rely on here. Noodles only laughed softly, for there was still nothing clear there, and asked him to look in her direction. When Batten looked in that direction, he saw Wu Tong continuing to run, throwing a beautiful bouquet of flowers, and Hu Yan Song was sitting next to her and crying. After that, it was as if a stone had fallen from his shoulders. He was over the moon because he could believe in their love again, and then Noodles revealed that this kid's name is Hu Yan Song. He's one of the Academy's top majors, and he's been running after Wu Tong for a year, and still rejects him. And in this way, he did not let his friend get discouraged, and even began to believe in him. But as they say, you have to train hard, but you have to eat breakfast on time. Since he had already spent all his energy, he just wanted to go to breakfast. And on the way there, he thought about the situation, and came to the conclusion that Noodles was right, and he had a good chance of losing weight, if he lost weight he would be able to compete for girls' hearts even with majors like Hu Yan Song. After a few minutes of thinking about it, he was tired and didn't want to waste time on wet fantasies. Since it was Saturday, he should get to work on the illustrations for the novella. Mentioning his name as the artist of a popular short story should also give him some weight. After eating, he went to the studio to create near the canvas. He had to paint the main character who was kind, active, smart, and carried a cute pet with her everywhere. He didn't even realize how his hand had already drawn. Wu Tung was shocked. And she was even beautiful even in the drawing. So she was also very well suited to this style. Suddenly, I walked into the workshop. Tun, who had also come to paint, and when she saw Batten, of course, she decided to come over and talk. Stepping closer to his canvas, she said, Wow! And when it came to him that she was looking at her drawing, she immediately started to justify herself by saying that he had not drawn her at all, and that she resembled her purely by accident. He also added that she was the main character of the novel, and that he had taken another girl as a prototype. She only smiled, and said that he was talking about the rabbit in his drawing. It looked just like a live rabbit. Mei Fan was depressed and felt very much like an idiot. But he realized that he needed to calm down, and started to remember how he had received a hundred rejections from girls and a guy, and that it wasn't the first time. She sat down beside him and began to draw as well. Mei Fan decided it would be better to keep quiet until he said something stupid that he would be ashamed of. After a few minutes, he had already finished his drawing, and it turned out to be very beautiful. After that, he got a new task, Illustrator. For the first stage, you have to draw 10 illustrations, reward, plus 10 points, and plus 1 drawing skill. For the second stage, it is necessary to draw 100 illustrations. The reward is 100 points, drawing skill plus 2, imagination plus 1. For the third stage, if you draw 500 illustrations, the reward is 500 points, drawing skill plus 3, imagination plus 1. And finally, for the fourth stage, you need to draw 1,000 illustrations, the reward plus 1,000 points, plus drawing skill plus 4, and imagination plus 1. Finally, he was happy, because this task was made just for him. Given his hand speed, it was easier for him to complete all four steps than to take candy from a child. Afterward, 
he decided to go to the outfit store because he wanted to see what he could buy. There was only one pen on sale there for a hundred points. So he decided to read more about this miracle pen. It was made of ultra lightweight materials and the available modes are pencil, gel pen, watercolor, colored pencils, and eraser. And all of these modes can be changed with a single tap. And as a little bonus, it gave a plus one to drawing skills. Overall, this pen covers any illustrator's needs. I guess that's why there's nothing else here. In his opinion, this pen would be as good as sneakers in terms of usefulness. Except there was one big problem. He only has two glasses in stock, so the shopping is postponed. When he logged out, he saw Toon in front of him. He asked Toon if he was okay, because he was frozen and didn't answer anything. Mayfan came out of this country situation by saying that he was just thinking, which was basically very similar to a true artist who was always flying in the clouds. She said goodbye to him since she had more homework to do, and she also didn't want to distract him from the robots. After that, he really regretted being such a tubby person. After all, Wu Tong herself had approached him to talk to him, and it was really a great opportunity to take the next step. But as usual, he was just scared. If it continued like this, he didn't see the benefit of losing weight at all if he continued to miss chances like this. He should act bolder. He has a plus 16 to his hand speed after all. And it really is that easy to impress any art academy student. On the other hand, dragging her by the arm to show off your super cool drawings is kind of a bad look from the outside. And he had a great idea. If you sketch a rough draft and ask her for advice and then smoothly move on to the topic, add to friends. And also after the drawing, he passed the first stage and got 10 points and drawing skills plus one. After he sketched, he walked right up to her. And it turns out that she was not only drawing, but also streaming it all on online platforms and making money from it all. Mei Fan was shocked that she was streaming her creations right in the workshop. She got a little scared when he went right behind her back. She asked him how long he had been standing behind her back. He mumbled a little, of course, but he was much more confident than he had been in the past. He also handed her a couple of his sketches and asked for advice on how to improve them. She took his drawings a little looked at the bottom and told him that she was a very traditional painter and didn't understand anything about Manhua, so she was unlikely to be able to help in any way. Mei Fan stood in a stupor as everything was not going according to the scenario and not how he had imagined it in his head. Wu Tong noticed that the one was a bit worried, so if he needed her advice so badly, she offered to refine the male character's limbs. And if the one wanted to make it more edgy and assertive, but could try painting over the tapers with ink. And it was a real good idea to work with ink. You could even work with it already. Not to stray far, and also to try and impress her, he asked to be given his brush. And he started creating right there. He added some mascara to the main character, and it was a whole different story. He also decided to finalize the rest of the characters. Wu Tong was shocked by the speed of his hands. This was basically what Mei Fan had hoped for, and afterwards advised him to record streams with such talents and make big bucks. After these words, he received a new task, Stream Master. You need to get 100 million views on your streams plus. After completing the assignment, the achievement Streaming Master will be awarded, as well as plus 10 to charm. In the past, all the tasks were opened after he started to do them himself. But to open this assignment, only her suggestion was enough, and Mei Fan was shocked. And in principle, the assignment was not bad, even easy enough for him because who but he knows how to stream. When he decided to watch the stages, there was nothing that complicated. For the first stage, you need 10,000 views, a reward plus one point, and a charm plus one. For the second 100,000 views, reward plus 10 points, and plus one to charm. For the third stage already a million views, award plus 100 points, plus one charm. For the fourth stage you need to get 10 million views, reward plus 1000 points plus one to charm. For the fifth stage you need to get 100 million views, reward plus 1000 points and plus one to charm. A bunch of points are given during the task and after completing all the steps, he will have as much as plus 15 to charm. Mei Fan was flying around in clouds and fantasies and he was abruptly interrupted by Wu Tong with the words, I said something stupid, didn't I? It was only after saying those words that he realized that he had been standing there like a fool. He had only hoped for one thing, that she wouldn't take her for a crazy person. He explained that he was just wondering about the streamers and laughed with delight. She gave him a weird look, but still understood his situation. Plus, 
since she had other things to do. Realizing that he might miss another chance, he pulled himself together and yelled, STOP! He approached her and suggested we go to dinner so she could talk more about the streamers. She wasn't feeling very comfortable, though she didn't mind counseling. But it wouldn't work out today since she already had a meeting scheduled. Realizing that it would not be possible to invite her to dinner, so I asked her to at least add him as a friend. Without any doubts, she immediately handed over the phone with a QR code. Mei Fan already wanted to scan her into the code, but at the moment, someone snatched his phone. It was some young kid who was into all things youthful. Wu Tun got into the conversation and asked him not to be fooled and to give the phone back immediately. This dude told Wu Tung that the fat guy was trying to trick her and showed her what apps he had on his phone. On Mei Fan's screen, there were five apps with the word stream on them. Wu Tun understood all of this and demanded he give the phone back. That guy came up to Mei Fan and said he remembered him and mouthed, a pig is not a swan's mate. Mei Fan was completely shocked. He just wanted to add her as a friend. And then some crazy guy came in talking nonsense and taking someone else's property. Wu Tong realized that this kid wouldn't let go of Mei Fan, so she took him under her arm and walked towards the exit. At the same time, this kid warned him that if he was bothering her, he would let him go to the meat factory. He also advised a fat guy like him to play sports. Mei Fan stood in a stupor from the situation going on, unable to even say goodbye to her. Some time later at noon he went to practice at the stadium, and he also reminisced during the run about his past life when he really did live like a pig, and it's hard to argue with that. After his rebirth, he's been working hard on himself, but the results aren't that noticeable yet. And if he really wants those around him to look at him with different eyes, he has to change even more. After running a bit more, he completed the first stage of the speed walking task, and in doing so was rewarded with a plus one point, as well as a plus one to stamina. He was very happy that he had already raced to the completion of the first stage. In his previous life, he would never have dreamed of increased endurance in such rapid progress. The system was right, if you don't give up, you can reach Mongo. Now the task of running 10,000 kilometers no longer seemed so impossible to him. He had a couple more laps to do to make his goal for the day and get even closer to accomplishing stage two. And it must be the result of increased endurance because the accumulated fatigue was removed like a hand. Given the increase in average speed and endurance, he would be able to roughly run five, seven kilometers each morning and evening. He should prioritize his tasks to maximize his efficiency. He'll put the speedwalker task at the bottom. To complete it, he simply needs to run every day and over time, his speed, strength, and stamina will increase. Improving these will in turn allow him to complete the illustrator tasks faster. The next tasks to be placed are Illustrator and Streaming Master. Illustrator will bring him improved drawing skills. Add to this, the speed of his hands and stream views are assured. Besides, Illustrator and Stream Master tasks can be done at the same time. And Spender tasks should be placed at the top of the pyramid. If you consistently perform the tasks Illustrator and Stream Master, in the result it should inevitably begin to bring money, which he can spend in advance in the completion of the task Spender. Thus from a clinical fat homebody he will sooner or later turn into a fast, strong, tough, charming and lucky guy. After he set his new goals for himself, then he began to EJ please to feel that he was getting better day by day posterior. In the evening he came to the workshop and decided to run the stream. For drawing themed streams, the best app to use is 8Station, and it's quite popular among fans of games, manga, and anime. He created a new profile there and started customizing everything. He also named his stream, Onai-san Character Special Session. That's what he does best. He clipped his cell phone right above the easel like it should be. And also before the broadcast, he sent invitations to his stream to all his groups. And there were quite a few of them. For example, Graphic Club, Artists Animators, Van Piss fans, pencil sketches, residents of the 2D world and so on, and started filming live streaming. And he was surprised, for he had 177 spectators at once, and he also got donations right away. And he already had 300,000 on his account and 3,000 points. It was not for nothing that he sent them gifts himself. He of course thanked everyone for their comments and gifts. The camera was facing his face first, and he had a lot of people throwing donuts at him because of his chubby face so he turned the camera around to the canvas so they wouldn't see his face. While he was creating and drawing, he was asked a lot of questions. Like, what will you draw, Batten? This is your first stream. Have you gotten a lot of presents? And also, many admired him, 
especially the speed of his hands. On this occasion, he wrote, Batten is not some dick from the mountain, and the future professional artist I also studied in his academy. Or, there were not very positive comments, you don't show your face, you don't tell funny stories, you should at least turn on the music, it's boring. Literally in a couple seconds, he already had the first sketch. He began to stop and continued to create more. Then again, in a couple seconds, he managed to paint this sketch. All the viewers who watched it were in complete shock at the beauty and speed of his hands. The audience became more and more, and the account already had almost 700,000. And he also rose to the 15th level. Donatas were coming to him very, very quickly. It didn't take long for them to recognize the icy Esdas. So he wanted to draw someone more recognizable. And he came up with the perfect idea. Since the first character was ice, let the second one represent fire. In a couple seconds, he drew the character again, who had the fire ability now, and the entire audience was once again stunned at what he had come up with, with not everyone happy. He immediately received a lot of messages from viewers about the character, such as, is anyone from his academy here? I'm willing to pay to get his ass kicked. Or, as soon as I saw the letter A on his belt, I thought of Ace, but I refused to believe it until the end. Or, turns out Ace looks good as a woman, too. And among all these comments, he noticed a familiar nickname. Looking closely, he realized that it was Noodles. And when he read his messages, he was completely shocked. What are you doing, Batten? How did you think of drawing Ace as a woman? Don't you know how passionate Van Piss fans are about their favorite characters? It was a reaction he clearly hadn't expected from all of his viewers, much less Noodles. He was very excited, because all that negative tone is set by just a couple commenters. It was mostly these couple commenters and changing the opinions of others that really pissed Batten off. So he went to the group Residents of the 2D World and explained his situation, that he has a couple of jerks on the stream, which scares people away and asked for help from the guys to throw positive comments on the broadcast so that those jerks are not even noticed. One because of a guy under the nickname Thick Skojic asked Batten for moderator rights and he will help him very easily, and easily, cleaning up all the inadequates. He gave him a moderator, and now with peace of mind, he continued to draw further. After a few minutes of this, he saw the thick-skinned man had already blocked enough toxic people who were shitting on his work. Suddenly, Tofu Ami came in and apologized to him in chat that he didn't make it to the start of the stream. So he threw him a gift in honor of his apology. He gave him a $450,000 ring of attraction. This attraction ring is launching a lottery that users will need to go to its stream to participate. And now now the audience is going to swoop in much sooner. So he plugged in, and he started drawing even faster. He turned on the maximum speed of his hands and started drawing very fast. He already had a million two hundred on his account. But the viewers were much less, as many as 486 people. I don't think people are ready for that kind of speed. He lost more than half of his audience in just a couple minutes. He wrote to Fatskin to keep the viewers on the stream. He wrote that it's not a problem for him at all, and he's saddling up now. He started drawing much slower, and now the audience stopped leaving. Also, when he drew the first girl, a bunch of good comments started popping up, where they praised Batten. After that, he continued to draw many more girls, from which there were a bunch of gifts and a lot of viewers. By the end of the stream, at 10 p.m., he already had 2,100,000 in his account as well as 18,000 points. He decided to please his viewers, and decided to draw a character near the end that most teenagers probably don't know. He drew Fujiko Mene, who he said was almost anyone's guess. He then promised to wait for everyone tomorrow at 19.30, and he would draw a special session on the Lulks and ended the stream. Although he now has only 500 subscribers, but for the first stream, it's pretty good. Total accumulated 2,100,000 local coins, or 2,100 in Yuan. Half of the platform takes away, so for two hours, he earned a thousand yuan, and now she's level 10 on the app. Right now, the highest level on station 8 is, it requires 147 million points. So far, he's got 18,000. In his opinion, in two or three sessions, he will complete the first stage of master streams. Namely, he needs to get 10,000 views. So far, he has 3,000 views. All his good mood vanished when he remembered today's situation with Wu Tong, because it turned out to be awkward, and he would at least know if she was really mad at him. If he suddenly saw her tomorrow morning on a run, he'd have to explain himself. But that would be tomorrow, and now he was going for an evening run, and so when he arrived for his 5-9am run, and to his dismay, he didn't see her there. He was in no condition to think, so he had to be sober about it. 
He was worried that she was upset with him, but he still believed that she wasn't and that everything was fine between them. And he also hoped she had things to do today, so he stopped getting himself worked up and he continued on with his assignments. When he ran five kilometers, he didn't stop and decided to run further. That one ran for a great deal longer, after which it fell in with helplessness. At this moment, he had passed the second stage of the Sooner Quest, and the reward was plus 10 points, as well as plus one to strength. So and also, he charged up like a 100% battery. He was full of strength. In the evening, he decided to go to the workshop. He opened the phone and asked everyone to come to his stream at 1930, where he would draw a special session with Loki. But out of the darkness came his teacher, who started proofreading it. Because as she wouldn't look at it, he has tons of free time for all sorts of streamers. And he hadn't even started on the illustrations for Soya Oti's short story, as she thought at first. Mayfan was not confused, and took out a couple of sketches from his backpack. He wanted to give it to her tomorrow, but since she came and demanded it now, it was even better for him. There were about 70 sketches, and when the teacher heard it and then saw it, she was shocked. It was something she had not expected. She didn't understand at all when he had time to draw and paint so much. When he answered that he was painting in the evenings, she couldn't get it out of her head. The teacher didn't understand what was going on with him lately, because she had just watched his stream yesterday. She had seen artists who practiced speed drawing, but his speed was just off the charts. This question stumped him, for he did not know how to answer it for he could not tell about the system. When the teacher saw his frightened look on his face, she thought he was using some third-party program while streaming. He was scared at first because he thought she knew about his system. But when he heard her through, it was like a stone fell from his shoulders. He made up a story related to his mom. Takeda the teacher was familiar with his mother's pedagogical methods, then quite understood and knew how she could train him very hard than the others. After all, he was her own son. Her eye began to twitch as she remembered his mom's hellish ways again. She immediately remembered how tedious it was to collect the peas in the bowl for five minutes. If she dropped a single one in the process, she would start all over again. Also when drawing with bells on her hand that shouldn't ring, and then there were the weights. She still recalls them with a shudder. If things didn't go according to plan, she instructed you not to whine, and said it was all for your own good. That's how she develops speed and strength and when she grows up, she'll thank her for it. She also realized that his mother treated much harsher than the others, and she felt very sorry for him. After all, if she treated the ordinary ones harshly, she was afraid to imagine what she was doing to her own son. She promised to send his illustrations to Shio T, and if she heard any news, she would let him know right away. Afterward, at 1930, as he had promised, Baton started up the workshop stream to repeat something like yesterday. Immediately, without hesitation, he set to work on the canvas. After a few minutes, the audience was growing, and he wanted to surprise them with something so more would join. So he started drawing some funny characters. Even Peppa Pig participated in his stream. Everyone laughed heartily, even Batten himself. After a few minutes of drawing on, he noticed that the plus ones to the strength he gained from his runs are showing up even here. He feels that he has to put less effort into pressing the pencil. After a while, he had almost a thousand people on his stream. That's less than yesterday though it's not surprising. Yesterday, the lion's share of viewers came because of the ring of attraction, and you don't get such gifts every day. But viewers are logging onto the stream just for him, not for the lottery. After hours of drawing on the streamer, he decided to finish with one last drawing, but to make it extravaganza, and drew something made up, which made people in the comments start laughing, and also bombarded that he was making fun of characters from another game like that. He finally passed the second stage, which was to draw 100 illustrations, and the reward for that was 100 points, drawing skills plus two, and imagination plus one. So it was also all saddled up on his birthday. When he got that plus one to his imagination, it all blended together. There were ponies and a bunch of bears and other stuff all around him. The feeling was just amazing. With those drawing skills, he feels like the Superman of the fine arts world. Imagination plus drawing skills is a wild mix, also, he earned a hundred points and decided to buy a miracle pen with it, one that could change modes. When he decided to change the mode, he was very surprised at the array of modes. There were markers, pencils, brushes, even an eraser. With a pen like this, he's not even Superman, he's a god of drawing. As he continued to get excited about his new abilities and pens, it wasn't until a few minutes later that he realized he had abruptly run away and didn't even say anything to his viewers about what to expect at his next stream. 
he was in such a hurry that he didn't even announce his next stream. So since he had already knocked out the stream, he decided to post this on his channel that tomorrow at 7.30pm he will be drawing Kimono Mimi. Those are the kind of characters with animal ears. And he also decided to see how much he had earned, and he was pleasantly surprised, for he had earned as much as 131. In general, a robot at McDonald's would be paid much less for two hours. But he is doing the job he loves, and he is also getting good money. He is also satisfied with the speed of completion of the task Master of Streams. Almost half of the first stage has already been completed. And if so, estimate the eye, he should be enough for two more sessions. And then he'll get a plus one to charm. A few seconds later, he heard messages on his phone. There, he saw that teacher had written to him, and also dropped him 5,000, saying that Xiaoyi had chosen 30 of his illustrations. After that, he set his goal, to move on to the spender task. After such good news, he decided to go to his home in the dorm. After all, it was already dark, and he was also very tired during the day. When he entered the room, it was dark and no one was there. A little further on, he met his friends who had prepared a surprise for him since it was Batten's birthday. Among the familiar faces, there was also a dorm mate named Shin Teg, nicknamed Dove. He's the main catcher of the dormitory and sleeps in other people's rooms more often than his own. But Batan wasn't very happy and instructed them to stop singing already, since his birthday is actually on Christmas Day. Last year there were a lot of jokes about it, and now they've forgotten all about it. Noodle stood up for everyone, and he told Dove all about how he'd changed lately, running and all. And now he's even a promising streamer, wasn't that reason enough to celebrate? As Dove said, starting a new life is like being reborn. Only Batten understood the meaning in those words, for it made more sense overall. For he had indeed died and been reborn. So with a little thought, of course we should celebrate. Especially there is more meaning in celebrating this birthday than all the previous ones. He walked over to the cake, wished to be stronger, fitter, more charming, and of course richer, and then blew out the candle. Everyone was about to start eating, but Batten received a couple of messages on his phone. He immediately thought he had won the lottery. Batten explained that he had just gotten a royalty for illustrating a short story. After that, they started the cake all together. Also, Datsun asked if anyone is going to the student day party tomorrow. Noodles didn't want to go there, so he and his girlfriend will go to the movies. Dove has already agreed with a girl to play sports together. Batten also had plans to stream as always, but then he realized that he had forgotten something. With all the assignments from the system, weight loss and so on, he had forgotten a lot of important things. He tried to improve only his own life and forgot about others. And if he remembered correctly, in his past life, it was at that party that Dakyang had been severely beaten up. After that event, he was depressed for a long time. He can't let that happen again. But he couldn't tell him to his face either because he wouldn't believe him at all. So he decided to keep a low profile. He asked her in front of everyone how she was doing with his sophomore girlfriend. Dakyang was shocked to find out about her. Also, everyone else was shocked. They didn't know he had gotten a girlfriend they didn't know about at all. Also, Batan not really remembered that he had made reservations at Mushan already and dinner money paid. But he can't tomorrow as he has to stream, so he would like to give them to him and his girlfriend. He also added that the place is nice, and taking her there will leave her impressed. Noodles and Dove didn't understand what was going on in the room. They also started asking him for the tickets, but he refused them, because he had already given them to Datsian, and it was the basis of his plan to save Datsian. Datsang didn't want to accept the tickets from him, as he knew that the prices for main courses started at a thousand yuan, and he was morally unable to accept such a thing. Batten cheered him up and also reminded him that if he refused, the two of them would tear each other's throats out for this opportunity. After a little thought, Datsian agreed, and as soon as he was paid for tutoring, he would immediately return everything to him. Batten was very happy, and also made him realize that he could take his time with the debt. After that, Batten went to the shower, turned on the water faucet and called his cousin. He needed to make a reservation for tomorrow night since she worked at the restaurant. So he asked how much the prepaid dinner from the Valentine's menu would cost. Cousin was very happy that he got a call from Meng Fan himself. She also told him that the main courses, plus two cocktails, plus dessert, plus a violin song. All together with the coupons, it would cost him 1,200 yuan. This price pleased Meng Fan He, as he had much more on his balance. So he ended up transferring it to her account. In the end, another 1,200 yuan went into the piggy bank to fulfill the spender. He helped himself and his friend. After a while, 
Noodles wrote to him with an offer to draw illustrations for a new novella. He had a buddy who writes web novels, quite successful, known as the Pintao Brother. His raging cultivation world novella had become extremely popular recently. So he saw a recording of his stream and liked the way he worked. He would like to order some sketches from him. To which Batten agreed to check out his short story. When I went to the website for this novella, the numbers looked very impressive. There were 35 million views and a score of 8 whole, 4 tenths points. In general, the audience is actively growing. They also plan to invest in advertising. They have a community in Visha, which he could easily look at. And when he went there, they had 100,000 subscribers on their page. Meng Fong likes to get feedback from viewers on his streams, and viewers like it too. But transferring paper and time just for the amusement of the audience is not serious. Now, if he were to draw sketches for the novellas on his streams, then everyone would benefit. This way he could climb to the top of the illustrator's craft in no time at all. So he thought hard, and took up the job, and assumed the number of viewers on his streams would soon skyrocket. He had just finished working on the illustrations for Xiao Ti's short story, Thousand Year Dream. Noodles also remembered that with a background like drawing illustrations for Xiao Ti's novella, he should bargain for a fee. But that didn't matter to Batten. The most important condition he wanted was to be able to stream as he worked on the illustrations. And the second thing is to have this type of guy show him as an artist in the novelization public and attach a link to his channel. Noodles replied that he would ask him for sure. After a while, Noodles wrote to Batten again. As he had promised, he had talked to the customer and the latter did not mind at all that he worked on part of the illustrations live. Also, in an upcoming chapter, he will recommend his channel right inside the novella. As for mentioning in the public, he agrees to leave a link to his channel twice a week. Noodles also told him that he had already worked with Xiao Ti and was impressed. He could offer him 1,500 yuan a week, provided he produced at least 10 quality sketches. Payment every week, fee in advance. Meng Fan was overjoyed. After all, 150 yuan for a good illustration in general. This price was slightly below the market. But with his hand speed, he would be able to fulfill the weekly plan in half a day. But the main benefit of such cooperation is not the fee, but the opportunity to increase the audience on the streamers. Meng Fan wrote to Noodle that he agreed, and would try to give out cool sketches every week. Noodle also gave his contact on WeChat, and told him to communicate with him directly. Batan wrote to brother Ping To, and the latter immediately transferred 1,500 yuan to him. He was a bit of a wordy kid, however he didn't care about that. And so, when Meng Fan had resolved all the issues, he still decided to really wash himself. And he also reflected while he was washing up that he's setting aside the next couple days to read the entire novella, and then he'll start illustrating on the streamers. A few days later, he went to the workshop in the evening for another of his streamers. The novella was longer than he expected. Also, the plot is so patched together, but he's finally ready to start illustrating. In the last two days, the total number of views has been just over 2,000. The numbers are stable, but there is no increase. But he has high hopes for the novella readers coming to this stream. He should be completing the first phase today. He started the stream and addressed everyone that he had taken on the job of illustrating a popular short story. The goal of today's stream is 10 drawings. The first five he will draw from memory, something from the classics. The remaining five will be figments of his imagination and could be illustrations for a novel. We started to write a bunch of new viewers who came through a link from the novella's publisher. So we could say that advertising started to work. But first we need to warm up the new audience with something from the classics. Within seconds, with his miracle speed and miracle pen, he drew a dragon. After this drawing, he started getting pelted with gifts and also spoke of his skill. Plus, four to drawing skills and plus one to imagination has an incredible effect. He had never felt so in his element before. Therefore, it was time to move on to the Raging Cultivation World novella. When he finished his first illustration, Everyone was as delighted as they had been the last time. He was one step away from completing the first stage of Master Streamers. You had to get 10,000 views to do that, and he just had 9913 views. And for that you also get plus one point and plus one to charm. So he decided to do one last drawing for the day of a minor character. One thing he didn't understand was when it became fashionable to use images of fat people as funny supporting characters. Fat people are always presented as some kind of clown. Allegedly, fatties can only be funny, good-natured, harmless, cowardly, and gutless, or as whipping boys. Who was it that decided that fat people couldn't be brave, serious, and tough? And while he was pondering this topic, he completed the first stage of Stream Master, 
and he finally got plus ones to charm. Looking in the mirror, prettier he didn't seem to be. And then he started thinking about how it was even defined, and how to check. And also, not to scare the viewers with his face, he decided it was better to stop the stream. Plus one seems such a nonsense as far as his opinions go. No one will even notice this change. And just then some woman came in. She started yelling at him to leave because she had to close the place down. And it was really late. That without even realizing it, he had been streaming for three hours straight. And like a decent man, he got up and apologized that he had lost his sense of time and he was finishing. She looked him in the eye, and it was as if his beauty made her swim. She also told him to take his time and let him do his own thing as long as he needed to, and she would sit there and do the puzzles. Batten did not understand what this is a joke, because the harmfulness of this janitor is legendary, why she suddenly became so nice and kind. It wasn't until later that he guessed it was likely working his plus one to charm, but it was really getting late outside, so he resumed his stream and reminded everyone that he was expecting everyone for 1930 tomorrow. And after that he went home, and he was very happy because today's stream had twice as many viewers as usual. At one point, he was on level 12. You can already say that he didn't take this order for nothing. Now he'll run some more, and then he'll go to the dorm, and there he'll test his charm again. But on his way home, he saw Datsyan and his girlfriend and some hooligans coming at him. Batten didn't understand how this was happening. Even if he influenced the course of the event, he couldn't change the outcome. He came closer and decided to first overhear their conversations and find out what was going on. At that time, Da Qiang's girlfriend was yelling at one of the hooligans, namely Zhang Gui. They dated five months ago but broke up then. They were no longer connected. And Datsian's girlfriend was not happy that he was now interested in her life. But now it was none of his business who she went on dates with. And when Batten heard all this, he realized why he had beaten up Da Qiang in his past life. That Zhang Gui didn't even have the guts to deal with it one on one, he brought his buddies with him. That bastard Zhang Gui took Da Qiang by his shirt, and told him not to interfere girls, but to stand back and not squeal. Batan didn't like it at all. He couldn't just stand there and watch being pressed. He would be depressed for a long time afterwards. He also wondered if he had the right to stick his hands in the natural passage. At this time, Da Qiang tried to somehow negotiate and calm the bastard down. He reminded him that they had already broken up with Xiao Xue a long time ago, and he couldn't have any claims against him. Zhang Gui already wanted to beat up Da Qiang, but it was prevented by Batten, who grabbed his two boys. He also threatened him in a manly voice that if he wanted to deal with him in a manly manner, he had better start right now, because soon the guards would start to go around the area. T tried to get out of his grip, but nothing worked, because he had a plus one to his strength. Even if Datsun takes the fight, at least it will be an even fight. The bastard didn't realize what this fat type was, nor did he understand why it was two of his men just froze who were telling him to do karate. Batten decided to finally intimidate the two men, so he made up and told them a story about what had happened in the same place two days earlier. The girl was screaming that something had been stolen from her. That thief didn't even get 10 meters before he nailed him to the ground. That girl came running back and said he stole her time. Almost a ready-made joke, but it was awkward in the end. Those two started to get worried and realized that the big guy could mash the three of them to the pavement. The bastard didn't understand why the two assholes had their faces switched like that. He looked to be at least 190 centimeters and weighed 120, 150 kilograms. The three of them could probably fuck him up. At this time, eye contact occurred between Dakyang and Baton. Also, Batonov added that now is the time to make him respect you. So he walked over to the bastard and placed his hand on his shoulder with full confidence. He told him what he thought. That is, he likes Xiao Su, and there's nothing he can do about it. And if that thought keeps him up at night, he's ready to deal with it here and now. He also gave him a second option. If he gave his word that he wouldn't bother her again, then they would part ways. Otherwise, he won't leave without Xin Yao today. Batten saw that he was sweating and standing all wet when they hadn't even started the fight. Seeing that his buddies were defeated, and he himself was unlikely to do anything, he made the decisions to just run away from that place. Baton didn't want to deal with the two yet, so he let them go, and they immediately ran off in the opposite direction from him. Da Qiang and Xiao Xue hugged each other. She also accepted his offers to go out with him, because she felt like she was behind a stone wall with him, so he can influence the outcome of events after all. Since he was no longer needed here, he still had a plan to fulfill, namely to make a run. In the last few days, he had run an average of 7 minutes and 45 seconds. This pace didn't even tire him out, so he had to speed up. With three more kilometers to go, 
he would complete the second stage. And after a while, he still managed to complete the second stage of the speedwalker task. Namely, he had to run 60 kilometers. And the reward was 50 points and speed plus one. His body was already prepared for the accelerated pace of running. And there was a plus one to his speed. He was having quite a productive day though. Suddenly someone shouted at his back. You keep running every day? When Batten turned around, he saw the same Wutong again. He was overjoyed, for he had even counted how long it had been since their last meeting, namely, 87 hours. Meng Fan was very excited, for he would like to apologize for last time, but she hadn't been seen lately. Wu Tun immediately began to reassure him that her brother had overreacted. She felt strange in her head. She remembered the awkwardness and then the abrupt disappearance, and she came over to say hello to him. It turns out that her brother came to invite her to her 13th brother's wedding. She has a family of 18 older brothers and 13 younger brothers. Meng Fan was shocked, as it turns out there are a total of 31 people in the family. It was a long story, but since she didn't need to rush into anything, she told him that his grandfather had six brothers. They each had three, four sons. In the end, her father's generation had 25 brothers and not one sister. Her generation was already in the birth control era, so her uncles had one or two children each, and yet everyone was a boy again. Except for hers, she is the only girl for all three generations. So she has 18 older brothers and 13 younger brothers. She decided to tell him a telling story from her childhood. When she was in elementary school, the boys had invented the idea of putting strawberry on the girls' heads. It's a nasty plant with prickly cones. One boy put a whole bunch of them on her head and she had to pull them out of her hair all day. After school, her brothers caught that boy. There were many of them, several from each class. Everyone wanted to tear him up. When the principal tried to get that boy out, her uncles came in and the principal locked himself in his office. The conflict was only resolved through the director's party connections. After listening to all of this, Meng Fan concluded that it must not be easy for her to date guys with brothers like that. That was basically the case. When you have 31 brothers, all of whom are so reverent towards you, she starts comparing guys to them. Plus, sometimes she feels like she knows everything about all types of men. It's hard to be interested in anyone. Meng Fan also thought that at least she was lucky that she was a girl and had many brothers who always blew dust off of you. If she were a guy with a bunch of sisters, she would have had a hard time. It turns out that Meng Fang had a similar situation. Four older sisters and three younger sisters. He's only one boy in the middle. When he was very young, their favorite thing to do was to dress him up as a girl. When he was about 10 years old, they lost interest. Instead, they started feeding him like a slaughterhouse. Whoever said that love is intangible just didn't know his sisters. He had been carrying their love around for years. As she looked at him, she realized that a guy like Batten wasn't among her brothers at all. Meng Fan immediately thought that she was flirting with him in this way, and also that it was the result of his charm upgrade. Without waiting for his response, she bid him goodbye and went for a run. At that, she didn't realize what was happening to her today, or why she had said all that to him. Meng Fan didn't want to lose his chance again at all, especially since he was charged to at least run 500 kilometers. And in a few minutes, he was indeed already near her, to which she was very surprised at how quickly he was progressing. But after a few laps, he was completely exhausted. She saw how exhausted he was and advised him that he had better go and rest, otherwise he would overtrain and tomorrow he would not want to get out of bed at all. And she also told me that there is a charity mini marathon next week, and she thought she would be interested. After these words, Batten has a new champion assignment. In order to complete the task, 100 points of champion glory must be gained. After completing the task, the achievement champion will be awarded as well as 50% plus to all stats. This is the third time this has happened. After her words, the assignment reopened. Could it have something to do with her system? The whole time, he stood there staring at one point without answering anything. Wu Tung thought he had overworked his brain and something had short-circuited. And she also revealed that she is one of the persons in charge of this mini-marathon. She was appointed by the academy. Meng Fong only cared about one thing. It was to enter and win this marathon. So he asked Wu Tong if she could sign up. Wu Tun was even a little excited and of course agreed to send him the link, except she still didn't have his visa. So she held out her phone to him again and told him to scan it. Only this time, bay her any bros. And so the day finally came when she showed up as his friend. Only at night in the dorm, he finally had time to check out the new assignment in peace. This time, the assignment has a completely different structure. There are no stages and there is a one-time award for each point, champion glory. 
100 champion glory points are required to complete the champion quest. Upon completion of the quest, the achievement champion will be awarded, as well as plus 50% to all stats. It turns out that for any point you get 100 points and plus half a percent to the characteristics. But according to this scheme, 100 points of championship glory is equal to 20 victories in world championships. Since he's not some kind of superman, he decided it's better to forget about this task for now. He's not asking for food anyway. He has plenty of reasons to be happy today too, what with adding Wu Tu as a friend. But she still hadn't sent him the link to participate, so he wanted to write to her first and remind her, but decided that he wouldn't impose himself on her yet, and it was best to wait. At the same time, you can learn a lot about a person from their posts on social networks, so he decided to do it for now. When he went to her profile, there were no pictures, there was nothing but this mini marathon. But since he had already gone there, he decided to at least like the post. And then, a new quest, Mad Barker, popped up for him, which requires a million likes to complete. After completing the challenge, the achievement, Crazy Biker, will be awarded, as well as a plus five to visibility. And then he was stunned again, because he knew who Wu Tung was. He just liked her post and a new task popped up. For the first stage, you have to get 10,000 likes, the reward is plus 10 points, and plus 1 for conspicuity. And that was a bit of an odd characterization for Batten, for it neither made him cold nor hot. He had never suffered from being overlooked. Considering how many sisters he had, he never went anywhere without them until he was 10, and people around him marveled at the way they fiddled with him. And after 10 o'clock he was so blown away that he couldn't keep a low profile even if he wanted to. But this task is given a lot of points, and you can do it without getting out of bed. If he completes this task quickly, he will soon become the owner of a miracle camera for a thousand points. All you have to do is put likes, what could be easier with his hand speed. Ten minutes later and 600 likes couldn't even be bumped no matter how hard he tried. It wasn't as easy as it seemed at first. Even with his hand speed it would take him at least three hours of poking at the screen to complete just the first step. It's one thing to spend three hours sketching on streamers. It's both useful and interesting. But three hours of poking at hearts is such a stupid waste of time. He could have let that happen, so he should have thought of something. In order to put a like on Vichat, you first need to open the entry. But in Weibo, it is such a microblogging platform, the thumbs up is visible immediately, so he will be able to put likes much faster. He started to try this method, but he found the tape too interesting and wanted to read everything. In the end, it was even slower than with Vichat. Noodles came into the room and said he stepped in dog shit right before he was going to kiss her, and then he came up with a rather interesting idea. Would the thumbs up work in real life? Because it was not said that likes would be counted only online. Batten decided to just encourage him that if you step in dog shit, it's good luck and showed him a thumbs up. And it really worked. The thumbs up works offline too. He decided to give him another two thumbs up and it worked again. And he was able to like Noodles two times in a row. Noodles gave him a strange look and said, Are you having some kind of trouble with your head again? After that, he gave him another thumbs up. He didn't even need to say anything. He could just show him his thumb. Dove and Datsyan had just entered the room, and they were a bit stunned. They didn't understand what was going on here, because from their side, it was like a sneaker versus thumb battle. He kept showing them his thumb by those it was disgusting to even be there, because Noodles had told them it was dog shit. He showed them his thumb, and it counted as three barks, but it still wasn't enough. So he came up with a plan, and since they were all here, he decided to demonstrate a dance for TikTok. Noodles and Dove were surprised and thought he was playing a joke. Datsang, on the other hand, decided to support him. Batten began to dance while giving them a thumbs up every second. After such a horrible performance, they decided not to watch it and went to bed, all thinking they would have nightmares with him dancing. He got over 200 likes in a minute, but that's not the limit. But tomorrow, he wanted to go to a crowded place and do something. The next day, he decided to go to the estate museum, which was very crowded. Everyone is looking wherever, but the mainstream of people are standing in line for tickets. The only way is to stand in front of the queue, and that's the only way the largest number of people will see it. He stood by the door and began to give the thumbs up. He was glad he was so good, because he had figured out how to show people his thumbs. Now he was getting more than 20 likes at a time. But there was also a disadvantage of this idea, that everyone looked at him as a sick person. From the outside it might look very silly, but he didn't care, and he didn't even take offense at the various negative comments against him. As long as he didn't get beaten up, it was good. 
and after three minutes, he still managed to complete the first stage, for which he got a plus one to visibility and plus ten points. And if he keeps this up, it won't be long before he has the remaining 1,100 points in his hands. But suddenly a marriage balloon fell into his hands. He didn't understand how he got it, because he was standing so far away from the bride. It's all due to the plus one in conspicuity. That characteristic will do him more harm than good. Two men from the staff came up to him and asked him to go on stage, because the landowner's daughter had chosen him. And after a little while, it came to him that this was the epicenter of the audience's attention. He went out to some balcony, and the landlord's son and the landlord's daughter were standing near him. He had never dreamed of such a crowd. The landlord's son approached him and asked him what his name was, and whence such a gentleman as he had come. Since he was part of a theatrical production, he should try not to slap his face in the dirt. So he introduced himself by simply calling him handsome, which made Sun stare at him. A little dumbfounded, first he had to ask if he was bound by the bonds of marriage. Talking through their script isn't going to get him any closer to completing the mission. He needs to take matters into his own hands. He made a mini clown of himself, and said you could tell he was fattening up on homemade pampushkas. Couldn't a bachelor stay in such great shape? which made the whole crowd just stupidly laugh at his words. Sunu didn't like it after all. He's standing here in the heat for some fat guy in the crowd to command more attention than the actors. So he decides it's time to chase him off the stage before something happens. In that case, he thanked the young gentleman for his participation and asked the entire crowd to give him a round of applause. His daughter would have to throw the marriage balloon again to find her soulmate. Batten saw that he wanted to be chased away immediately, so in order not to miss his chance to pass the stage, he asked to perform his farewell dance. Without hearing him answer whether it was okay to perform, he started singing and dancing that his daughter was the best, while giving everyone a thumbs up. All the people didn't really understand and didn't catch up with his gimmick and dance, but Batten didn't care. The most important thing was showing everyone the thumbs up. The people found it so funny that they started recording it on cameras. After a few minutes of his performance, he had racked up 90,000 likes faster than the first 10,000. He completed the second round of Mad Barker and was rewarded with a plus 100 points and a plus one to visibility. One wave of the hand counts half a thousand likes in the system. His scheme is unparalleled. But his miraculous dance was interrupted by Sun, and she told her staff that it was time for the young gentleman in honor and asked him to show him the way. And somehow they managed to force him away, even though he still wanted to dance. In the end, he managed to collect almost 200,000 likes. At this rate, he will still be able to collect his thousand points in five or six runs. So he decided to go there once more, and he wondered, since she had thrown the ball at him at plus one to conspicuity, if she would notice him now that he now had a plus two conspicuity. If he gets to the stage again, they will kick him out so easily, because he felt the power and ease of passing this assignment. The girl who was throwing the ball again saw that sick bastard again. So she threw anywhere but in his direction, he was already scared shitless of him. This time, Batten was unlucky, and a completely different person got the ball. But he didn't want to just wait and watch, so he shouted his congratulations to him, thus earning another 5,000 likes in just a couple of seconds. There was a benefit to the visibility after all. After that, the ceremony ended, and all the actors started to leave for lunch. People also started to disperse. It seems that the landowner's daughter remembered him well, and would never throw a balloon in his direction. Waiting for their next exit was already pointless, especially since it was already lunchtime. He had already surpassed all his expectations by accumulating 200,000 likes in half a day. Still have to go to a couple witches' houses in the afternoon and then a stream in the evening and only then finally home. When Batten got on the bus, he started manually putting likes since he didn't have anything to wait for yet. And on that bus, everyone was just discussing some video. Of course they were referring to Baton, who was dancing on the balcony at the time, and to them he was very funny and hilarious. Two girls on the bus, who were actively discussing this video, saw this funny fat guy, and at first could not even believe their eyes that he was sitting against them. So to avoid guessing whether it's him or not, these girls decided to approach him directly to ask him. Batten wasn't very surprised that someone had posted it on TikTok, and it had already gathered a hundred thousand likes. He was only sorry that these likes were not counted by the system. He was a lot of fun for them, and were also so thrilled with his dance that they asked him to perform it right there. There are fewer people on the bus than in the square in front of the estate, but it's better than manually poking at the screen. So he still danced, and everyone laughed at him, but he still managed to collect 5,000 likes in such a short train. But he still couldn't get the 100,000 likes on the video of him in TikTok out of his head. 
he couldn't shake the feeling that he'd been ripped off. He also got a call from Noodles telling him, you're a bad. After all, old man Ma had taken roll call today at class and was very unhappy about his absence. But it was a surprise to him, for he had never marked absentees before. Noodles noticed it too, and didn't realize it. And like the others, he was shocked. Other than Batten, there were five other people who didn't show up for the pairing. But old man Ma didn't even pay attention to it. But for half of the class, he scolded him alone, and promised that he wouldn't let him take the exam. Noodles had never seen the veins in a man's face swell from screaming. Batten was all depressed. He didn't understand why he was so unlucky. Out of the six people who didn't come to the pair, he only noticed him alone. It was because he was tall and fat that people immediately noticed his absence or presence. And in a moment, he realized it was all because of the stupid visibility. It was just another setup from the system. By his logic, it should be helping the wearer, not making his life harder. Then he got a prompt from the system. At the current level of visibility, the carrier's absence from class would be noticed 100% of the time. In the evening, he still decided to go to the academy to the department. The explanatory note he brought was supposed to calm the old man down. Like a decent student, he knocked on the door and was told to come in. As soon as he entered, old Ma started yelling at him about how he still had the nerve to come here. He also showed him a video of him dancing and giving him a thumbs up. Old man Ma didn't understand what these antics were instead of attending his lectures. Batan was at first surprised that Starkey was even watching TikTok, but he decided to repent that he had made a mistake and it wouldn't happen again and handed him his letter of explanation. But the old man did not care for his notes, and would not even accept them from him, for it was too little he could do to make amends. Batan didn't know what to do anymore, for he had already realized that old man Ma was not at all in a good mood today. But an idea also popped into his head. He remembered his stream in the workshop when the janitor who was angry with him abruptly showed up at his door. Last time that janitor also got mad at him, but after he smiled at her, but became very kind to him. And it's all through the charm he's developed through streaming and drawing. So he started smiling and saying he was admitting his guilt, but also said he wasn't a bad guy at all. But the Starkey and continued to doubt that not a bad kid. But once he started looking at his face, it was as if he saw a completely different guy. It was as if old man Ma had fallen in love with him all over and was beginning to think that he really had done nothing unforgivable. He took his explanatory note and asked him to try not to miss his classes again. Batten was very glad that his plan had worked so he bent down to give thanks, and with peace of mind walked out of there. And as soon as he came out, Old Ma came to his senses and did not understand at all what it was, and already thought that he had gone soft in his old age. Batten on the other hand has promised himself to use the charm more often, because it actually works quite well. On the other end of the line, he introduced himself as the bank's security department, and they had just debited over 120,000 yuan in Thailand and they wanted to confirm whether it was really him. After hearing all of this, he yelled, Yay! I just bought myself an elephant! Fuck you assholes! And dropped the call. The bank called him again and told him that his personal account had been accidentally linked to his phone number, so a code should come now and asked him to tell them. After that, he hung up the phone again with great anger. After that, people started calling him again and asking for something from him. Like, Good evening. Your son is now in police or, you subscribe to our service if you want to cancel it, invite the combination that was sent to your phone. Again, it's all about that retarded conspicuity. Someone called him again, and he thought he would have to turn off his phone, and as soon as he got back to the dorm, he wanted to download some kind of call blocker. But this time, the Pinto brother wrote, two more of his co-workers wanted to work with him. The price remained the same. The first is Baboud's novella, The Incomparable Power of the Sword, the second is Dungeon Spirits by Sleepy Grandpa. It turns out Batten himself is looking forward to the release of new chapters of this novella more than vacations. Sleepy Grandpa has long been among his favorite web novelists. According to his own statement, as soon as he sits down to write, he immediately falls asleep. He rarely produces chapters, but the short stories are wonderful. So of course he agreed to Pintao Brothers' suggestions, as it would be an honor for him. And also Pintao added that they agreed to his condition about the stream and links to it. And as always, he came to the workshop to conduct his streamings. He first wanted to draw five classic American characters, after which he would embark on a Dungeon Spirits novella. In a few minutes, he managed to draw and color the Joker, Spider-Man, and Superman beautifully. After that, he drew Smurf and Avatar, which also turned out very nicely for him. 
and finally got around to drawing illustrations for the short story, Dungeon Spirits. He started creating on canvas, with as many as 6,000 people on his streamer. He was very surprised. On the second stage of Streaming Master, he needed to get 100,000 views for the reward, plus 10 points, and plus one charm. And so far, he had 35,000 views. The number of caretakers has increased by almost 9,000. This is twice as many as before. It was all thanks to Sleepy Grandpa's links, Batten thought. They wrote in the chat room that they had come here purely by chance, and then it came to him that this was his celebrity, and at least she had helped him in some way. That characterization made his head spin. He only wondered if visibility was a gift or a curse, but he quickly pulled himself together and realized that it was best not to disturb this monster just yet. There could be too many side effects from this characteristic, so he vowed no more dancing. Suddenly, he got a message from the Station 8 moderators. They congratulated the channel Baton's Workshop for hitting the trends. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the evening, his channel will be listed as Station 8 Recommends in the Drawing category. Batten was very happy because getting on the recommendation list equals more views. More views equals sooner completion of the task. Another plus one to the charm, and he'd be just as irresistible as a pretty flower. The more pumped up his charms are, the higher the chance of falling in love with him. So there's a lot more upside to visibility than downside. For the sake of a great love, he will somehow survive calls from scammers. He also changed his mind, deciding to go dancing again tomorrow. He was already on the bus at 5 o'clock and 30 minutes on Friday, heading for the museum estate stop. If he's on stage again, he'll probably end up with the Mad Barker task. After all, it's Friday, so there must be a lot of people. Because of his inability to skip classes unnoticed, he would only be able to come in the evenings. When he got closer, he didn't see any actors, and concluded that they were on a break. As he was walking around the grounds of the Manor Museum, he noticed the landlord's son, and started shouting at him to notice him. At that moment, he was calmly drinking the view and did not even suspect anything. And as soon as he shouted, he spit out all the water that was in his mouth. He came closer to Sun, the landowner, and asked him for a favor. And the man was very frightened and asked what he wanted from him. And there was really nothing criminal, he just asked her colleague to coax him to throw the marriage ball in his direction. But he didn't want to guarantee anything, because it was fate and pure luck. He understood everything perfectly well. But there are also situations where in order to get lucky, you have to put in the effort first. And handed him his phone with a video of him dancing and asked him to look at it. Landlord's son didn't understand what he wanted to show or what the freak had in mind. When he watched the video, he was very shocked that it garnered as many as a million likes. Looking at him, he couldn't believe that this fat man was the star of TikTok. After thinking about it for a while, he realized that his popularity could really help attract more viewers to their performances but he's too willful to let him derail their performances. So he decided to accept his offers, but with the condition that he could only proceed to his dance after the main part of the performance. He calmed him down and told him not to worry because he would only need three minutes on stage at the very end and he wouldn't ruin their show. And afterward, they shook hands with each other and each was satisfied that he would get the benefit. Last time, he got about 200,000 likes in a minute on stage. Now he would have three minutes, plus his visibility had increased he was sure he would complete this task today. After that, Batten really caught that marriage balloon. So finally a husband in the form of Batten and his supposedly wife exchange bows. All the people immediately remembered that it was the same dancing fat man from TikTok. And everyone was glad they had come tonight for a reason. Seeing TikTok's rising star live is worth a lot. Next, Landlord's son announced that the husband and wife were retiring to the bridal room. This day is very significant for Batten. He would like to share his joy and dance with everyone. Having thrown off his mating ball, he proceeded to dance, that is, to accomplish the task. He was even joined by other people who were standing around, even landowner's son and his daughter, as well as their two other servants. A few minutes later, he managed to complete the third stage of the Mad Liker challenge. He showed everything exactly one million thumbs up, and his reward was plus 1,000 points, as well as plus one notability. Immediately, a new challenge popped up, Insane Liker 2.0. In order to complete the challenge, you must have 100 million likes. After completing the challenge, you will be awarded the achievement Crazy Barker 2.0, as well as a plus 10 to visibility. Baton didn't understand why such a shitty assignment had an upgraded version. He didn't understand why he needed the plus 14 to be more visible, because he wouldn't survive it all. The first stage is 5 million likes, 
rewarding 500 points and plus one to visibility. The second stage is 10 million likes, rewarding 1,000 points and plus one to visibility. He'd already gotten the coveted 1,000 points. His visibility was already through the roof and he didn't need more. He didn't care about this mission. He would get a lot of points, but it was better not to risk further increase in visibility. There was also an items button. He went in to see what was even for sale there. And there was only one non-marking cap. When wearing this cap, the wearer's visibility will be close to zero. He'll be able to get rid of his visibility completely. With a cap like that, he can do whatever he wants. But he came to his senses quickly, and he needed to calm down somehow. That cap will just reduce your new visibility, but it won't make him invisible. Besides, he's a gentleman. Unfortunately, this cap costs a thousand points, as well as a miracle camera. And now he only has a little more than a thousand points. He was only doing the crazy Barker building to buy a camera. But on the other hand, it wouldn't be a big deal if he kept shooting with his phone, because he needed the cap more than the visibility right now. With a cap like that, he could negate all the side effects of visibility. So he decided to buy that cap after all, but he couldn't and kicked out an error. But there was no time for that, for it was already time for him to go to the streamer. When he took the bus to the workshop, everyone stared at him without exaggeration. Even when he was plus two in visibility, he felt uncomfortable. And now he was plus six and couldn't go anywhere. But there were perks to it too. When they wanted to rob him and steal his wallet, a random person started yelling at the whole bus that there were robberies going on here. Because he was so much stronger, he just knocked him over and sat on him. He had nowhere else to sit, and here was a free and comfortable place to sit. In desperation, he began to beg for mercy. But Batten didn't even think about it. He asked the thief what he had thought before, and it would be better if he chose someone in a different weight category. The thief began to cry and told that he knew nothing because he had only stolen from grandmothers before. And suddenly it came to Batten that even pickpockets can't pass plus six to conspicuousness. Without that hat, he's gonna lose his head. Everyone on the bus began to support Batten for having apprehended the thief, even to the point of tears. Someone even started filming the whole thing on his phone. Even the bus driver was willing to take him to the police if he suddenly decided to turn him in there. Baton is very much on his mind. If he goes to the police, there's no telling how long it will take. And today is his first stream after being on the recommended list. On the other hand, if you just let this pickpocket go and go back to the workshop, he's going to disappoint all those good people. Our world is constantly changing, but some things remain the same. If someone steals your wallet, the chances of getting your money back and catching the thief are usually slim to none. Most people don't care at all about other people's grief. They would rather stay on the sidelines and not get involved. But these people behave differently. No one knows if his visibility had wilted the situation, but their willingness to sacrifice their time to act as witnesses against the pickpocket impressed him. He couldn't just spit in their souls. And as for the stream, you can do that any other day. A thief should be in jail, so he wants to turn him into the police. Since such a movement began, such content should be shared with people. So one of the witnesses took out a phone and began to shoot it all on camera. That's when Batten realized why he suddenly thought he couldn't stream. So he asked everyone on that bus for a notebook and a pencil. And one girl just happened to have a notebook and a pencil. And she didn't mind lending it to him at all. But also before the broadcast, it was worth explaining to the viewers what's going on. And I wrote in the description of the stream, Today I was another victim of a karmanic. That's why the theme of this stream will be about this. He started filming his face and told him that the thief had been caught and he was just sitting on it. Now they were taking the whole bus to the police and also showed all the witnesses to this crime. After all, thanks to these kind people, he could catch the thief and they immediately intervened in the situation. To remain mysterious for everyone on the stream, his face is ordinary and there is nothing to show. It's just about the peak of evening traffic. It won't be long before they get to the nearest lot. So he'll stream straight from the bus and the pickpocket will serve as his easel. The girl who gave him a pencil and a notebook offered to hold his phone because that way he wouldn't feel comfortable drawing at all. Baton was very grateful to the girl. Since he has limited resources today, he'll draw some black and white sketches in the style of Jojo. Everyone was thrilled with his drawings. Even those on the bus and standing around were thrilled too. But that was just the beginning, and he kept creating. After a few drawings, there are only 5,000 views left to complete the second phase of the Streaming Master Challenge. At the same time, the bus driver shouted to everyone that it was only a couple minutes away from the station. But in his opinion, that should be enough for him. And he drew the last sketch for the day, 
and in doing so, completed the second stage of Stream Master and was rewarded with plus 10 points and plus 1 to charm. Things had turned out better than he had believed and imagined. Then he decided to go turn the pickpocket into the police. And that's the end of the show for today. When Batten turned him into the police, he hoped the incident would serve as a lesson to him, and hoped he would reform. After he ratted out that pickpocket, he headed for the dorm. He was so tired today he didn't even want to run. Now he would drink a can of cool Coca-Cola and lie down on the crib. As he walked by he noticed a soda machine. He had some sort of hallucination, and he was being accosted by two girls in the form of Coca-Cola, asking them to take them and drink them, because they used to be in such a close relationship. But he began to remember being called chubby, fatty, another cheese dip. He's starving, and he's going crazy. He's been running for a month, doesn't even know if there are results, and decided to weigh in. Batten decided to take off his sneakers and sweatshirt, because they are very heavy. And then the result will be quite different. But the pants are better to leave. When he weighed himself, it was 113 pounds. A month ago, he was at least 120 pounds. It turns out he's lost at least 7 pounds, after such a good result. He decided it would be better to drink mineral water after all. If he drank a Coke now, he'd have a candy bar tomorrow. And he didn't run for a whole month to gain back all the lost Kiji in a couple of days. So it's better to grit your teeth and keep working on yourself. Come to think of it, not only has he lost weight in the past month, but he has also made good progress in other aspects. He already had excellent characteristics such as plus ones to imagination, plus two to charm, plus three to drawing skills, plus two to strength, plus eight to noticeability, plus two to speed, plus two to stamina, and plus 16 to hand speed. And of the tasks left for him, the first task was Trangira. First stage, 4,000 out of 10,000 yuan. The second task, Illustrator, Third stage, 400 illustrations out of 500. The third task, Good Man, completed completely. The fourth task, Skorokod, was only on the fifth stage, 170 kilometers out of 200. The fifth assignment, Streaming Master, he was on the third stage and also had 150,000 views out of 10 million views. The sixth assignment, Champion, was just open. The seventh assignment, Mad Liker, was also completed. But the 8th assignment, Mad Liker 2.0, he had just not long ago opened and was at the first stage. Had 10 million likes out of 50 million likes. To perform a backward speed walk, he spends a lot of time, and he only runs 20 kilometers a day so far. You'd have to think about how he could be depleted with some other activity. Like he did with the Illustrator and Streaming Master tasks. And while no one was in the area to practice, we got to buy and try out the Miracle Camera. So he went out and easily bought a miracle camera for a thousand points. This camera looks strange, to say the least. It's best not to use it in public, otherwise it will attract too much attention. It would have been much better if it looked like a regular GoPro. And as soon as he wanted it, the camera immediately transformed into a GoPro. It turns out that it can also be transformed at will. He decided to test it out and turn on the broadcast with just the power of thought and especially he can control it without hands, and it is really very convenient. He will run 10 kilometers today as usual, and then tomorrow he will run a mini marathon with Wu Tung. Before that, he needs to complete the current stage so that he can further improve his performance by the time of the marathon. But he didn't realize, because there were only two viewers on the stream, and the number of views increased by four. Running into the stadium, he noticed two people in the stands looking at him. And then it came to him that when he broadcasts, not only online but offline views are counted. If he knew this before, he wouldn't be streaming alone in the workshop. We need to change the streaming strategy. From tomorrow, his streams will be seen by people, offline as well. Saturday morning, he drove to the Homestead Museum again. He was thrown a marriage balloon again, and he became a husband again. He also filmed the whole thing on his miracle camera, which he had attached to his sweatshirt. After bowing before his wife, he addressed all the people, saying that today's laziness was again significant for him. He got married again. He also asked to share his joy and dance with everyone. But before that, he asked the staff of the landlord's son to come downstairs and film him, as he was currently broadcasting. He agreed to his unusual request without any problems at all. After a minute, he thanked everyone, and that was the end of his dance. He wanted to make an announcement that in 10 minutes, he would start painting portraits for free and also asked to feel free to participate. His experiment in combining the back end of Master of Broadcasting and Insane Barker 2.0 was very much a success. 
it racked up over 30,000 views in just a few minutes. The progress with the distribution of likes is not so impressive, but he, and had only a minute. Because before that the landlord's son, asked everyone instead of resting from his dancing for now, because he comes out all the attention from their performance attracts on himself. He then positioned himself outside the museum and started yelling into the mouthpiece, Don't pass by! I'll paint your porter for free, free, quality, fast. But in 20 minutes no one came to him at all, because they thought it was a scam, because it was written that it was free. And since he was streaming it, I read the comment, you should have brought someone you know and drawn him first. And he was actually right. Everyone's embarrassed to be first. All he has to do is find one, and the others won't have to be called. And in a moment he saw the landowner's daughter in the crowd, and that's when he thought she should save him. He approached her, and since she was on break, offered to draw her, since he had been given such an assignment at the art academy. And she agreed, only asked him to finish quickly, that he would soon be on stage again, and he could do it just as fast. After she sat down, more and more people started to come up and see what he could do. And in a minute, he had already drawn the landowner's daughter, and a very beautiful one at that. And also, the girls who were standing around watching it all were very surprised at how well and quickly he draws and wanted a portrait like this too. The landowner's daughter was also quite enamored with the beauty of drawing. She even asked to take a picture with him because he was so talented. And after that, he got a new assignment called Relfist. To complete the task, you must take 100 photos with different people. After completing the task will be awarded the achievement Relfist, and as a reward plus one to photogenic, and plus one to infectious smile. And then he wondered whether he needed to be so photogenic and infectious smile. He is not a public person. Be that as it may, these characteristics will definitely not harm him. Besides, you can perform this task in between. After the landowner's daughter, another girl came up and asked to draw her to which Batten, of course, agreed. And after a couple minutes, she already had her drawing drawn and also asked to have her picture taken with it. Batten, of course, agreed, for he needed it just right for the assignment. After this drawing, there were more and more people wanting to have a portrait done by him. And since it wasn't really organized, he asked to get in line. After that, he started drawing and also almost everyone wanted to take a picture with him. Given the length of the line, even if he spends five minutes on each, the people who are now standing at the end of the line won't get their portrait, even after an hour. It didn't suit him, especially as it was getting hot outside, he needed to paint faster. So he decided to do portraits in monochrome and when he gave the client this portrait she didn't really like it. She didn't understand what a shoddy job he had done on her. She could see that he had drawn multicolored portraits of all the girls in front of her. But for some reason her portrait was one colored. Before her it took about five minutes for each one. But for her, he spent no more than two minutes. He Batten just wanted all the people in line to just have time to get an op portrait, and he didn't mean anything so bad by it. But she didn't care about that, and she still didn't understand why it was only as it came to her that he started hobbling around. And then she threatened him that he was going to draw her a normal porter, even if it took 15 minutes. Otherwise, she would tell the other people in line that the longer they waited, the worse the quality of the drawings would be. He wasn't at all prepared for that reaction. Even the people in the chat room hadn't expected her to do that. But to scandalize her now would be foolish. It would only waste time and nerves. And as soon as he thought about it, he saw a dude on the streamer writing on the line. He closed his eyes and muttered to himself, Dear Baka, I don't want to be distracted by her. Help me out. Thus sent him messages with his mind. Baka then approached Batten and this frantic girl, who didn't subside for a moment at all. Baka advised to ignore this hysterical woman and continue to paint as she wants. That one asked what he called her, and Baka added that she was also deaf once she interjected. With a big breath of air, he said to her, He painted your portrait for free, and you're going to be stubborn? He only changed the way he painted so that all the people in line could get their portraits. How can you have the nerve to demand that a normal portrait be redone? All the people who were standing around started clapping him for putting such an insolent girl in her place. She didn't even have anything to answer him and more and more people started shouting that she should go away and not delay her turn. And also all the viewers noticed that he has a very strange and red channel. Second day in a row on the stream such passions are unfolding. Yesterday it was a pickpocket, today it's a hysteric. After that, people who were standing near him started coming to him and asking him for the name of his channel to subscribe to it. He then told everyone that in the Station 8 apps, you have to type Batten Workshop into the search. After the girl signed up for it, she sent him an attraction ring. 
for which he personally expressed his gratitude to her. After he solved the problem with that hysterical woman, things picked up and the line started moving quickly. And in the end, he finally succeeded in the Relfus challenge. And as a reward, he got plus one to photogenic, plus 100 points, and plus one to smile contagiously. That's the most free 100 points he's ever gotten, and maybe they'll help him stream tomorrow's marathon. For today's stream alone, he gained 100,000 views. Against this background, the previous figures seem ridiculous. Today we also need to run to the mark of 200 kilometers in order to pump up our endurance for tomorrow's marathon. The next day, he did show up for this marathon. He approached the staff of this marathon and saying he was a participant, asked him for a t-shirt. At first the girl thought it was a prank and didn't understand how a fat guy like him could even participate in a marathon. Seeing the surprise on the girl's face, he held out his phone to her with the application form. And though she didn't want to upset him, there was no size for him. And at this moment Wu Tong, who was happy to see him, walked over. Since she realized he wasn't in typical shape, she purposely set aside a larger size t-shirt for him. Baton was overjoyed, and he also had the words, especially for you, stuck in his head, which made him feel warm in his heart. She also pointed her finger at some dude in the bushes who was staring at him and asked him if he knew who he was or if he should call the police. When he looked a little closer, he saw Noodles there, and he told her that he was his dorm roommate, and he also wanted to participate in the marathon too. He was just really shy. When he heard that he was being talked to, he jumped out of the bushes and told me what he was doing here. Batten told him that he wanted to take part in the marathon, but he didn't believe him. So he decided to come here in person and make sure. Wu Tong decided to support him and said that Mei Feng ran a mini marathon and said that he was doing a great job, which made him very embarrassed and blushed. She was also a little embarrassed that she was being too sincere. And since she had a lot of things to do, she decided to go. And Mei Feng understood that and didn't want to distract her. Without getting far, she turned around and said he just had a dazzling smile today. Noodles expressed to Batten his respect for all this. He did not even listen to him, for he was over the moon. In a few minutes the marathon was starting, and since Noodles was here, he asked Noodles to help him with the stream. Since he wasn't going to run, he said yes. He also reminded him not to take pictures of his face. And after that, he started the stream. First, he greeted everyone and also explained to all the viewers that today he would be streaming his participation in the charity mini-marathon. No matter how much they gave him, he promised to donate the same amount to the fund for this marathon. And immediately, several people donated a ring of attraction. To everyone beforehand, he thanked them for donating and also said that they won't see his face again. He doesn't want his popularity as a streamer to be based on his beautiful ski cap. After that, he once again approached Noodles and asked him for one more thing that needed his help. Namely, to get on a moped and ride behind him to take pictures of him from the back and communicate with the audience. Noodles didn't like it, and he began to resent it. He saw him as just a servant, and he was not going to participate in this. But after a couple minutes, he was already sitting on the wind with a microphone and camera, and started streaming the Batten's workshop channel. He also introduced himself to everyone and explained what was helping him today. He also started to talk more and more about the charity Mini Marathon, meter by meter. In total, more than 2,500 participants signed up for the event, mostly students and young white-collar workers. And also, their common friend Baton's physique stands out from the crowd. Already at the start, everyone was waiting for the start of this marathon. Also, the people standing near Mei Feng started to make fun of him, because he was standing with his eyes closed, and it looked like he was asleep. But no one even realized that he was in his system, and he wanted to buy a sports drink for 10 points which would come in very handy in this marathon. It prevents dehydration, provides the body with enough electrolytes and essential minerals. It is effective for one hour. On a normal lazy day, he could run 10 kilometers in an hour and 50 minutes. But in today's race, he would challenge himself. And after that, the marathon began. And yet his goal was, was to run 10 kilometers in an hour. After six minutes and 30 seconds, he had already run one kilometer. He will consider that the first kilometer was a warm-up, and now he can accelerate. Noodles was riding behind him on a moped and commenting on his every action. Baton used to gasp when walking fast, but now he was taking on a marathon by himself. Noodles didn't understand at all how he was able to force himself to change. Suddenly, another motorcycle with a cameraman drove up to him, and they were filming Baton. From the look of it, it was obvious that he obviously weighed more than 100 kilograms, but he was not lagging behind the other participants at all and showed him some respect. This cameraman believed in him that he could make it to the end, 
and then he would be the highlight of this marathon and wished him luck. The first nutrition item was coming up and he wanted to take water to wash down the energy gel. You need to replenish your body with carbohydrates. Acceleration uses up too much energy. He logged back into his system and bought a gel that was worth one point. It was just an energy gel that replenishes glycogen deficiency in the muscles relieves 50% of fatigue, effective for 10 minutes. He took some water from the water station and poured it on himself to cool himself down. He had already run 3 kilometers with a time of 18 minutes and 30 seconds. This was very good for him, as he now ran the second and third kilometer 30 seconds faster than the first. We need to keep this speed for the rest of the marathon. There were still 7 kilometers to go, but all the spectators and cameramen of this marathon sincerely wished him luck and believed in him. Noodles admitted he was in complete shock. He thought Batten had come here just for the sake of ticking boxes, and he was sure he'd be out of the race in a couple hundred meters. But today he's blowing all the tricks. He's teary-eyed with pride for Batten. After that, he started yelling at him that he was proud of him. But Baton didn't understand why he had to yell like a moron so that everyone would stare at him again. He ran 5 kilometers in 30 minutes and 35 seconds. But he struggles to keep up his pace. His strength was leaving him faster than he'd bargained for. The sports drink effect is still in effect. The energy gel fulfills the glycogen stores in the muscles, but it's still not enough. Perhaps at a slower running pace they would have made the fatigue go away, but right now the bottoms are almost useless. 8 kilometers, he ran in 48 minutes and 33 seconds. His legs felt like cotton, and his eyes were beginning to darken. He wanted to lose weight, he was tired of being fat. And then Noodles started yelling at him to start looking ahead straight ahead. Ahead of him was the finish line, where Wu Tong stood and shouted that he had done well. Seeing this, he started screaming like a demon, and he ran with all his last strength while overtaking others. Everyone was rooting for him, even Dove and Dachin were watching the live broadcast. And he still managed to cross the finish line, and he did it first. He was covered in sweat and without strength and he pitched straight to the floor, but Wu Tong managed to hold him back. And also after that, they started calling for a doctor. In doing so, Noodles crashed in on a moped. He was fine, but he thinks everyone is curious to know what's going on with Batten now. The doctor quickly began to examine Batten, but he came to his senses even though he was almost exhausted. He was very happy that he won, and also told Wu Tung that he ran the last kilometer in 5 minutes and 28 seconds. That was exactly 10 kilometers in an hour. Wu Tong quickly shut him up so that he wouldn't lose his strength and praised him. Noodles ran up to him and started to cry, even though he was genuinely worried about him. But the doctor and Wu Tung didn't understand why he was being so dramatic. The doctor saw that his friend was very worried and calmed him down, telling him that he was fine. It was just that his body was exhausted, and he needs regular rest. After lying on the pavement for a bit, he regained his strength and was finally able to get up. Wu Tung told him to rest for now, and she should be behind the donation counter right now. Noodles piled on to hug him so hard that he almost fell and pushed him off him. Except the camera was in Noodles' hand, and he showed everyone on the stream his face. As it is, there's no point in hiding your face any longer. So after combing his hair a bit, he took the camera and pointed it at his face, and advised that this is not something that overweight viewers should try right off the bat. And he told me that it's something you have to prepare for. He started running about a month ago, and has run several hundred kilometers. He also wanted to see afterward how much he even got paid for today's stream. When he opened his stream on his phone, he saw that it was now being watched by over 80,000 viewers. He thanked everyone who subscribed to his channel and threw to donate either to him or immediately in the app of today's marathon, meter by meter. He promised to donate an amount equal to your donations, so he will. In total, he received 9,850,000 coins, which was 9,850 in Yuan, from all the spectators. So he decided not to put it off and went to the donation counter right now. Wu Tung was just standing there, who explained, in order to donate money, just scan this code. When he transferred 10,000 Yuan, Wu Tung was shocked that he had donated so much. The thing is, the system takes 50% of donations so he had thrown in 5,000 out of his own pocket. Apparently, Batan likes Wu Tung, so he decided to flaunt it in front of her. He then completed the first stage of the Trenjira task and received plus 10 points. Noodles did not understand what he was doing because he only got less than 5,000 yuan for the stream. He knows it all and understands it all. Batan decided it would be fair if he threw in 5,000 from the audience and 5,000 from him. He hoped that no one would think he was some kind of major and was spending his mother's money. 
he explained to everyone that his sketches were selling well. Wu Tung thanked him for such an expensive donation. She also held out her face to him because he was completely covered in sweat. Then the girl who was also working behind the donation counter remarked that it was her boyfriend. A little obese, it's fixable. To which Wu Tun asked her friend to shut up and also blushed heavily. Hu Yansung and his security guard walked into their conversation. Wu Tong immediately started yelling at him and not to call her Tun Tun. Hu Yansong on the road, he hit a traffic jam and thought he wouldn't catch it. Good thing he has a BMW and once he drove into the empty avenue, it was impossible to hold him back. He doesn't like to run, but he can easily support her with flowers and a donation. Batten wanted to take matters into his own hands, so he showed him the card and asked him to scan it. Toth told him to fuck off, to which Batten reacted very badly and held back very hard from exploding. He threw a bundle of money containing 3,000 wen. Wu Tung thanked him, but also reminded him that with this donation he was not supporting her, but the fight against poverty. Looking a little closer into Batten's face, he saw in him the same Ron Yu with the funny TikTok dance. He started evaluating him and realized he wasn't eating that badly. He also asked him if he donated or not, but to poor children. So he wanted to bring him down and make him look like a hero. Batten only replied, well, just a little bit, I'm not as good as you. At the same time, he really wanted to punch him in the face. But that's no way to behave on streams, so he decided to put up with it. Noodles couldn't listen to this, and he was on his way to hit him. But Batten stopped him. He also said goodbye to everyone and left with Noodles. After moving away from that place, he let go of Noodles, and the latter immediately started yelling at him. What was he doing, and was he really scared of Hu Yun soon? Batten wanted to explain everything to him, but Noodles interrupted him and told him to explain everything better to his audience, because they were puzzled, as they had seen everything that had happened from beginning to end. Batten asked his audience not to worry. Even though he's a jerk, he still donated 3,000. That's not a small amount either. Would it be right to publicly humiliate a person after they have done a good deed? And as for Wu Tut, her friend and the rest of the witnesses to the situation, they know the true state of affairs, and that's enough. Sane people see through the essence of people like him. There's no reason for him to get dirty. And on that note, he decided to end the live broadcast, as he needed to go back to his dorm and get some rest, and promised another stream for the evening. That was a fruitful stream today, it's getting closer to a million views, only 300,000 more views to go. At its peak, over 87,000 people were watching it, and he was already at level 20.